Okay. I just asked you how long you've been back and you say in a couple of hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, you just like landed in message. You'd be like, let's fucking rock and roll. Let's, go, <laughs> let's, let's knock go. it out. Let's knock uh, this out. Yeah, I landed and I was like, uh, well, I landed and I had to get a haircut because I was out there for two weeks. I was basically gone out of town for two weeks. Uh, so I landed. I was like, let me get a haircut. I just actually just got back from the gym. So um, I, went, I got a haircut and then went straight to the gym to work out. Dude, you fucking have been home for like a handful of hours. You get a haircut, get a workout, belt off a podcast. Like fucking, you're like the world's most productive man. You've been yeah. on this side, this side of the world for like not even a half a day. Yeah, I just wanted to. I mean, we talked about. It. I was like, wanted to get all this stuff out of the way. Um, just because I know there's been like a lot of conversation, and I was yeah. like, let me handle this now, and then focus on going into a new year. Because I know there's been a lot of conversation. I haven't had the chance to like publicly respond. So Ooh, there's been conversation, man. Yeah. There's been a lot of conversation. <laughs> you gotta strike when the iron's hot. I yeah. didn't. I didn't know entirely what to expect when you're going out to Korea. I know like Joey had mentioned it and I, th I, I think you guys both had mentioned a previous podcast, but I wasn't sure what exactly was going to happen. Yeah. You're you going out to Korea where you, you guys telling yourselves we're going to make a push for the 90 kilo class in like a major way. I thought it might just be a fun meet. Yeah. I didn't know this was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So uh, just the backstory behind all of that. Um, yeah. I was getting ready for a bodybuilding show around the same time frame that this meet was supposed to happen. And uh, like in the midst of, it was it was like this crazy part because it was like one of those days where I was doing cardio and I was questioning, I'm like, God damn, like, do I even want to keep doing this? And literally like the uh, the guy from, from South Korea messaged me, the USAPL South Korea, he messaged me. He's like, hey man, we're having this meet. Um, just thought I'd sh uh, shoot in the dark and see if he'd be interested in coming. And I sat there, I was like, damn, this is a good opportunity. So I, I talked with Joey and we ended up uh, doing it. And I was actually going to compete as an 82.5. There was no like plans of going to 90 kg. I wanted to treat it as um, just like, I, I wanted to treat it as like a national meet because I wanted to make a statement. I knew it was like a local meet, but I still wanted to put my best foot forward. And that's what I kept telling the guy. And then as I was like going through the process, like it's holiday season, um, a lot of stuff from work to where like, I can't really focus in as much as like the nutrition aspect as I would like to. And I was like, bro, I'm going to South Korea. I was also planning to go to Japan. I was like, to cut in that circumstance would just be stressful as hell. And it's it's a local meet. So I decided, I'm like, hey, man, Joey, what do you think about me just like free balling and kind of going up to 90 kg, not, you know, worrying about weight and let's just compete. And he's like, okay. This is where it gets a little bit, a little <laughs> bit juicier. Um, there was some conversation that was being had. Uh I mean, fuck it. We all, we on the podcast. Let me get all this shit off my chest. Let's go. There's some conversations being had. Uh, Petrie made some posts that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And uh, he's a weight class above me. So I was just like, fuck it. Let me out total him at this meet then. Cause like, I just, I got tired of like the conversation. I was like, all right. Like if you think that you're a better lifter than me or whatever, that just that error, I was like, let me just go up a weight class and show you. It's not, you know, you're not ahead of me. So I went to the weight class and the goal was to out total whatever the 90 kg total was at nationals and then just talk my shit. So that, that ended up being the plan. Well, okay. So what exactly was he, was he posting? Was it just, was it direct? Was it, um, or was it just the way he's carrying himself and you're an alpha? He's an alpha. No, 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 no. It's not even that. I, I don't like, I don't. So I'm very, uh, I'm very sensitive in a competitive aspect when people speak on my name or, you know, say something that's kind of like not in the best of light. It irritates me just because I wouldn't go out of my way to say stuff about that about other people. Um, but just going back to the story, <clears throat> he had made some posts. I think he had done like a Q and A saying like, "Who's the number one lifter? Who, in your opinion, who's the number one lifter?" And some people were mentioning my name, mm -hmm. and he he decided to go out of his way to he would he said okay so he would go out of his way and be like, "Russell shouldn't be your number one lifter, and this is why." And I'm like. <laughs> Like <laughs> I'm sitting yeah. there. I didn't even, I didn't even see this. People were bringing it to me. I'm like, I'm like, there's like, what's the context behind this? Like what, what happened? Like, I don't get yeah. it. Ooh, so that's what funny that, say. Yeah. So it's just more so just like, Oh, Russell shouldn't be your number one lifter. And this is why. Um, and then p other people will name some other people. And then he's like, yeah, th that's valid. I'm like, okay. Like interesting. So yeah, that's where I just kind of like developed that, that petty competitive where I'm like, all right, let me, uh, let me take care of business. And, uh, start looking towards going towards an ID KG weight class.
<laughs> well, I mean, I mean, well, well, first off, okay, look, this is what we do as athletes. Like people, you know, you get inspired by someone else, even if they're doubters. Yeah. But on top of that, it's also like if he's thinking it, who else is thinking this shit? Exactly. Well, you know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. like, oh, yeah. is that yeah. all right? Okay, yeah. is that so, what you guys think? Exactly. So it was more so just like, I mean, he has his camp, and I'm like, if he's thinking that, they all thinking that. So I'm like, all right. Bet. <laughs> like, These are the conversations being had, and even yeah. like the fans as well. There's going to be some people who, you know, there's nothing like moving up a weight class and claiming another weight class. And people respect Brandon when people talk about, um, you know, Bob Ashton in the USAPL. They'll throw him in there and be like, "Yeah, but like," and even I've seen Bob or whatever be like, "You better mention Brandon Petrie, shit like that." Where it's kind of like, "Yeah, uh, I don't." I don't mind that because they're teammates. You know, they want to look out for right. each other. But like, and this is another hot topic that I brought up. I don't give a fuck about no like dots. Like my thing is just stacking up chips and champions. And I mean, uh, in winning. And he's only done that once. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to take nothing away from his, his victory or whatever. But when I don't feel as though. I don't feel as though he's in that conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like Taylor is in his own world. And it's not even because of his dot score. It's because he wins over and over and over again. And that's what I look at as greatness. Like you could win one time. Like I've shown, like I just did this meet and show like, yo, if I want to come to 90 kg, I'm like, I can, I'm like, I'm going to stop you from winning. Like, you know, it's like what you won one time. So it's like that conversation is a little bit different because when I start talking about who's the best lifter or the best lifters in um, the USAPL or the IPF or whatever, whatever it may be, I'm looking at how many times have you won? How many times have you been tested? Um, I don't really care about dots. I mean, it, it plays a very small factor, but it's not the factor for me. So you have you have one good year, kudos. Like, that's cool. But, you know, real greatness comes when you do it over and over and over and over again. Here's the problem with dots that I would say, or like any formula, it mm. fucking changes. You were around for Wilkes. You remember. If mm. you had like tournaments based off of Wilkes and the best Wilkes wins the tournament, mm. you could double back a year later when they change a formula and a new winner, someone who came in third would now then win. Same performance. Yeah. Exact same performance, though. Yeah. You're, it, it's difficult when you have a tournament and you change the formula in which it's based and you could every other year change who actually won the tournament. Yep. Same same participants, same performances. It's It changes the context of history, whereas straight up, head-to-head, kilos. Yeah. Never change. It'll never yeah. change. Let's just straight up go head-to-head kilos. Who fucking wins this? It's yeah. very, it's it's far cleaner. It's a yeah. lot cleaner, you know? I'm not sure where this whole conversation came from. I'm not, I don't, like I said, I made that tweet and it was like made and just passing. I was just, just tweeting. It's been <laughs> happening with you. Yeah, I, I don't make things. I don't say things to get a rise out of people. I just, I'm just chilling. I could be watching an NBA game and like, maybe they talk about something like, um, uh, they, you know, I mean, you you know, UFC, MV, uh, MVPs, and all that kind of stuff, and like winning. And I'm thinking about, I'm like, you know, there is a lot of people mentioning me. Oh, we should do a, we should do a con, we should do a meet that's go dots for dots. I'm like, that is so stupid. Like, I can't, <laughs> I can't control, I can't control my dots. Like, yeah, I can be yeah. as strong as I want. If I'm in the wrong weight class or my weight's wrong, like, it's, it's fucked, you know? So, yeah, I look at it, it's like, what could I control? Okay, I could go head to head with this guy right here and put my will against his will and beat him. I can control that. I can't control, like, my dots. Like, And that shit's ever-changing. Like you said, there's formulas that may bump you up another 10 points or knock you off another 10 points, and now that puts you in first. It's just a lot of different factors that I just really can't control. Like, it's not up to my, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't in the I wasn't in the room while they were making that formula right. to put my foot or anything like that. So I don't I don't categorize how good, am I, I, uh, how good of a lifter I am based off, like, my dots, Wilkes, IPF points, or whatever. It's more so just about like who have I beat who have I beat head to head and how many times have I beaten that person head to head. I think historically speaking, it'll shine a lot better when you just talk about head to heads and titles and shit like that. Obviously, yeah, come on, man! Like this, <laughs> but like what do we really talk? Like that whole conversation when USAPL posted that, I didn't even look at it because like I people kept mentioning me and saying like, "Oh, Russ is like, what is Russ talking about?" Da da da. I'm like, Sh- just shut up. Like I don't. It's not that hard to understand, in my opinion, that like. Greatness is based off of the amount of times you win. Who cares about MVPs? Who cares about dots? Who cares about all that shit? It's just that stuff. 
augments your greatness, but the true greatness comes from how many times you win. Yeah, that's an after. That's an icing on the cake. Oh, by yeah. the way, by the yeah. way, he also had this, that, or whatever. Just exactly. win. Um, also, okay, so why do you think it is that all of a sudden lately, it feels like in the last six months, everybody's all over all your comments. You, you're hot as shit. It's, I, what the, I don't know what the fuck. Dog, Sports Center. Sports Center's <laughs> quoting you now? Like, what is going on right now, dude? It's like, I'm fucking, what's, every time you tweet or comment. I'm not sure. I think I say things that don't resonate with the powerlifting community. So they just, I, I found that like, I'm actually, and I've said this before to you, I feel like I'm not the powerlifter's powerlifter. Like, I have an athlete mindset, like, and I don't think powerlifters have an athlete mindset. They, they just don't. Like when I hear, I listen to some of y'all's conversations and podcasts. There's that one podcast I, I listened to with Taylor, uh, Laya or Leah, and uh, I think maybe two of their coaches or something yeah, like that. That's right. Yeah. And I was just listening to the conversation outside of Taylor. And I was like, yeah, they not, they just don't get it. And it's fine. Like it, everyone's different, but I feel like I'm one of the few and Taylor's one of them too, that has the, the mindset of athlete. And when I say certain things, it gets taken completely wrong. And uh, it's just because there's a different approach. I have a very, I have a very dogmatic and athletic, uh, athletic approach to what I do inside of the gym. And some people don't, they, they don't, they, they're not, it's not that they're not serious about their training. They just have a different approach to it. And when I, I listen to that podcast in particular, and I just couldn't help but laugh like every two seconds. So I'm just like, yeah, we just, we just different. <laughs> it, it's even in the way you carry yourself. If they want to know, like, how does Russ have this massive following? There's other good lifters. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's hard to explain because you see things differently. And it's like, man. Yeah. Oh, gonna be I, was, tough. I was on the plane. And I was like looking at powerlifters pages and I'm like, God damn y'all's page is so boring. Like not in a disrespectful way, but bro, like, why are you posting? <laughs> okay. Why are you post like, when you look at some powerlifters pages, it's literally just every day of their training. Let me turn this off. Literally every day of their training. I'm like, who cares? Like, <laughs> it'd be like, oh, I did. So let's say like I, I could deadlift 771, right? I'm not going to post my, my, my shit set of like 650 that I did. You know what I'm saying? I might do it once or twice to show that everything isn't always sweet, but I'm gonna right. find something else to post. Maybe something more entertaining that engages the audience to my personality. Um, but I just look at some of these guys' pages. I'm just like, literally, you just post the same thing every single day. And it just gets repetitive and boring. 100%. And, and, and I don't know, I mean, there's, well, here's another thing. Okay. This kind of leads into another question I have, but first off, like, obviously not everybody's got your appeal. You're, you could, you could body build. You, you haven't, you know, you went the other direction. You're humming and haunting about bodybuilding, but you could fucking body build. Not everyone's going to be looking like you when they take their shirt off. However, right. So there, it helps to have an image for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, but here's a question. Are you going to lean into the 90 kilo, 82 and a half kilo what does your 2023 look like? So my 2023 just looks like, uh, so this past year, I didn't have the opportunity to do what I wanted to do due to injury. Um, there's that conversation where I haven't, I haven't um, made any progress in the past three years, which was interesting. Um, I, thought it was a, I, I thought it was a very lazy assessment and very lazy and uh, anal, uh, analyst or anal, whatever. And I looked at it, I was like, I was like, bro, I won the 82s like on one leg. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, I literally squatted twice before that meet. And um, so what I wanted to do with this year was to put like some icing on the cake when it came to my total. Um, 842 was a very, 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 very subpar number that I hit. I'm very proud of that number just because I hit it given the circumstances I was in, but that's not what I wanted to do. So Going into this year, I want to put together like a very, very special performance that makes people literally look at me and be like, okay, that's, there's no, con there should be no more conversation between him and anyone else. That's what I like to do in 2023. Then after 2023, I mean, yeah, in 2023, that'll give me six wins. And I think that's sufficient enough to now move up a weight class and then start dominating the next weight class. So yeah, that's going to be the plan for 2023. And then going to 2024, uh, we're going to start dipping into the 90 kgs and seeing how far we can push it in that weight class. Cause it'll, you obviously cut to make 82 and a half. Uh -huh. You're going into this, you weighed 80, uh, 89.8. Yeah. 90. 
did you just walk in on that? Did you cut it all? Do you need to cut it all to make 90? So once again, it's holiday season. So I just kept eating. Um, yeah. oh, I've actually, <laughs> I just kept eating, man. And I was too, like, Joey would be like, yo, check the scale, check the scale, check the scale. I'm like, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, I'm like, he's like, uh, you're going to be a 100 <laughs> kilo if you don't settle down. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, cause I was eating, I, ain't gonna, I was eating like shit every day, like Chick-fil-A, yeah. um, just, just bull, just bullshit. And, um, I didn't want to check my weight. So I, the cut for me to get into 82.5 isn't that hard. I just have to be disciplined and focused. Um, so I got up to, I had to do like a little water cut. It was like three pounds, but I was like 201 or 202 the morning of the meet. So I was a little bit heavy. You yeah. look, you now, I was, dice I was, though. No, I was, I was, honestly, I've been sloppy, bro. Like this, this, <laughs> the last couple of months, like have not been like my best physique which is insane because I'm like, I, I could get way tired. I usually walk around like 195. The thing is, well, I mean, those hotels, you know, we find good lighting, right? <laughs> we have power left to find lighting. And you yeah. look, you look diced as shit, but you yeah. know, obviously you, you could choose lighting or whatnot, but yeah. it is, um yeah, okay. I mean, for sure, if you full on commit to 90 kilo, you could see where you would start like having more of a cut closer to what you do to 82 and a half do you think would you start filling out because then you're on my mass moves mass right yeah but i could never in my life picture you being chubby no hey, you don't look chubby to me though at 90 yeah, kilo yeah. but if you want to keep adding more kilos to cut into 90 like these are uh, i think slow do it i was sloppy man like i wasn't i don't think i was getting enough protein i wasn't you know doing what i had i feel like if i really lock into 90 like that's why I'm just like, I'm not concerned with, I'm not concerned with anyone in that weight class. Cause I'm just like, once I, once I decide that that's the weight class I want to go into the gains, cause I was experiencing newbie gains with a short amount of time that I decided to do nineties. Right. It was ridiculous. Like I was literally like, I'll, I'll go into the gym. I'm like, I, I think I could rent seven Oh five today. <laughs> like, I was like, let me try it out. And I'm like, Holy shit. It feels light on my back. So once I commit, like, nutrition wise to the 90s like i think i would actually be a light 90 i'd probably be like walking in like 195 190 you know 195 ish 197 i'm um, going yeah. to those meets and, yeah i mean if you don't need to why what, what's the sense right um looking at the current landscape obviously you saw what jamar did is that enticing to you to stay at an 82.5 does that play any role at all on why you're staying at 82.5 or at the very least, if you already were going to stay 82.5, does it make it more exciting as someone's getting within 10 kilo of you? So it's. Uh, people look at it as, as 10 kilos close to me and I, I don't. So like I did what I did on like, that's my worst, <laughs> you know, saying like, that's not the best showing. The only time where it gets interesting is if I'm dealing with something, like if I, if I'm off or like, I have an injury, then it gets interesting. But me personally, like that wasn't, I, 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 I like that he did that because he gets to show people that um, he's closer than, than what people think. And he's like actually in the mix versus like being like four, uh, fourth or fifth. But for me personally, I wanted to come back because I want to, I want to leave the 82s with a bar that's pretty difficult to reach. Um, I feel like staying on top for six years in a row is, is pretty difficult and not a lot of people are going to be able to have the opportunity to do that because other than me, it's like nip and tuck. Like if you miss a lift, you could go from second to fourth or whatever. So I feel like that's going to leave me like one of the best 82 to 83 kgs to ever do it. And then now it's trying to transition to the 90s. So it wasn't more so about like that performance or anything like that. It's more so just like I want to put it at six. Then I also want to put it at a number that is going to be pretty difficult to top in the next like one to two years. And I mean, to an extent, you putting up, 85, um, even though it was a weight class up, kind of takes a little bit of steam out of the showdown with Jamar after people see what you can do, full capabilities. Even though it's a weight class up, it's like yeah. very impactful to see somebody pushing in on numbers you did. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. What what do you anticipate then? Do you know what 82.5? Do you have numbers you want that you would like to send off at? Be like, okay, this <laughs> I feel good with, close the door, no looking back uh yeah because i have a whole year to prep for it and right. yeah so yeah i do yeah i want to hit like um i want to hit like something close to what i hit now um just oh, more tightened up yeah so it's gonna 
I already know what it's going to take. So I'm already kind of going in with 2023 with that mindset of like, it doesn't start close to September, it starts now. So you have to start building towards that. Um, it's just me understanding like what I have to do with my body um, and just committing myself on the nutrition side. It's going into that. So yeah, I have a number in my head. It's kind of close to what I did at this, at this weight class. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what I want to, that's what I want going into 82.5. Now there was some chatter leading into South Korea and mm -hmm. that, that motivated you. Yeah. Um, how about the chatter now since what have you noticed? Cause I noticed in your Instagram stories, yeah, you, you're on your shit. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're doing some yeah. Taylor Atwood style posting. You're on, you're feeling it. Um, <clears throat> what, what do you think the climate is? The temperature of the room is with everybody else after you hit this? Do you think the, is different chatter, different talk? I I don't know. You guys would have to tell me. I don't really pay attention as much. I just know what was said before. Um, I like I've actually done a pretty good job of not concerning myself with people say. Like whenever, whenever the USAPL posts me or you guys post me, I don't even look at the comments. I just I like and I drop my comment if I feel like dropping a comment and then I leave. Uh, so I don't know what people are saying now. Uh, I'm not on Reddit either, so I don't see that. Um, That's good. Yeah, but whatever. <laughs> good. But whatever. And I've instructed people that know me too. If like, if you know me, and you have like my number. Don't text me no shit about what someone's saying about me. Um, I might catch things here and there, but honestly, I don't. I think I think the biggest thing is that someone or people were saying that my deadlift was like kind of iffy, um, or it shouldn't have counted. And I I think that's about it. But to me, it's just like <laughs> I don't I don't. It's at 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 this point, I just feel like people are just gonna say something about something. I don't know. I saw someone said that I didn't even squat to depth at my meet. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like they'll try to take you. They'll try to take something away. So it's all good. People, uh, Arian said this before people will consistently say, you can't judge depth on the squat from the front. And then somebody sees a video it's from the front and they will be real fucking quick to say that didn't count. That did yeah. count away. It's like, I thought you said you can't count like that. So, yeah. I mean, take it with a grain of salt when people say stuff like that. Like, I think it is. You're 100% right. You're at a point now where um, you've been, and maybe you, have you felt this? Maybe I'll phrase this as a question. You've been on top for so long, for all of these years, the number one ranked, and now you moved up and now you're, you're encroaching on other people's titles and other people's goals, other night, not just Brennan, but other nineties now who wanted that. Are like, well, fuck, am I going to be dealing with the rest now? And mm -hmm. what's this going to look like? Um, do you think you're starting to turn into like that franchise, that dynasty, like the Yankees? I used the Yankees, but there's been other dynasties, the, the 90s Bulls. And you were using the Michael Jordan in, in your stories where the people who, who loved Michael Jordan in the 90s, dog, I'm older, so I remember, <laughs> loved Jordan. They lo I was around yeah. for him. He was loved. You know, all of them, Ali, loved. Those guys who were brash, dominant, were loved. Also, people started hating him. They couldn't wait for finally someone to beat him because yeah. they're too good for too long. You yeah. know, you like that's what happens when you stick around, yeah. you're too dominant. Every franchise. Um, yeah. do you think that's starting to happen? Or in this is where traction really gets built because yeah. some people love you and then some people hate you, and then the comments get fucking filled, <laughs> and people share it, be like, Can you fucking believe this guy? And other yeah. people share it like that's my fucking shit, you know. Yeah. It, but, it's, it, that's, do you think that's what's hitting now? Is this the apex sure. of what it all is? For sure. I feel like, um, I was just shout out to my boy, Dylan. We were just talking about it. He's like, he's like, man, I didn't notice how much, how much hate you get sometimes. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Like, you know, it's, I told him like, once you get to a certain point, it's not even about what you're doing. It's just, people just want to see you fall off because it's hard to relate and like someone that I guess like I will talk my shit, but then also I'll back it up and like do it repeatedly. So at a certain point, like people just want to see you get knocked off and I get it. Like I'm not, I'm not I don't trip too much about that kind of stuff. It's just like the personal disrespect kind of stuff that, that kind of irritates me a little bit. Cause once yeah. I, this, this past nationals, um, people were like, Oh, who do you think, who, who do you think is going to win or whatever? And like, there was like a decent amount of people that are saying, um, Sean and I, and our this remember, nationals. Yeah. This past nationals. Yeah. And there, I, lot, I think it was Barway Gates video. They did there. Uh, it was Bart Quan asking people like, who do you think is going to win? And there's a legion of people saying Sean. And I was like, it made me really realize I'm like, damn, like people, people just don't like me. Like, and, and cause I'm like, there's no, there's no, in my head, there's no way like he should be favored to win or chosen to win or anything like that. So I was like, 
Okay, like that's just straight up like, oh, I don't want Russ to win type of thing, you know? So um, I started realizing that and uh, it's cool because I, I feed off of that. I like, I like uh, not being everyone's enemy, but like seriously, like for me, I train better off of being like the underdog and like the disliked person because it just fuels, fuels everything, you know? Well, you need both. You got both. Like for sure, far more people like you than, yeah, than the yeah. haters. Like, like it's not even close, obviously. Like yeah. you drop a post, you got like, I think your recap's got like 75,000 likes for God's yeah. sake. Like, so it's incredible amount, but mm. you cannot reach a level of the amount of followers you have and amount of people who like you. It's impossible. There are going to be people just contrarian to where everybody likes this guy or likes his band, likes his movie. And someone's going to be like, fucking getting sick of hearing about this guy. Yeah. You know, that just happens. It's inevitable, man. There's, and, like uh, the, there's a period of like when you first break through, they love you. Right. I was, I, I broke it down to someone. I was like, I was like, number one, like when you win with number one, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hero story. Everyone loves you. Number two, it's like, oh, okay. Like, you know, you're, you know, you're backing up. Now, number yeah. three, you start feeling yourself. You start feeling yourself. You, you start feeling yourself a little the bit. The sequel's good. Yeah, yeah. You know, by feel this, good. You're, you're be like, oh, you know, like, ah, oh, like I'm really that guy. Ah, oh, okay. And then I, now you have like a couple of haters, like, who does this guy think he is? Now, number right. four, you're really feeling yourself. You're talking your shit. Now people want to see you fall and then so on, so on. So the, eventually, like, when the fuck does Rocky lose in this franchise? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Rocky wins every single goddamn movie. This yeah. movie, you know what I mean? But yeah. I feel like because the first one, um, you were an underdog against Brett. Brett was the world champ. And like, you will unite all of the US. Like everyone's like, fucking let's go. So when you win, it's like, our fucking, that's our guy on top. You know, yeah. like it feels like, oh shit, it was a big deal. Um, the thing is though, yes, then you won again and you keep winning and you're still number one. And all these years later, it, you're still here and people are like, fuck, you know, yeah. this is this is what happens. <laughs> yeah. um, but it is what it is. So going into Korea, first off how was the flight the travel and all that did you think that was gonna did it impact you i was i was see you never know what to expect when someone literally goes to the other side of the world that is a crazy flight mm -hmm. different time zones a different day man yeah um i get tired of people making that excuse to be honest with you like when well, i see people, yeah whenever <laughs> i see people do meet recaps and they have nothing but excuses i'm like that's just pitiful like, I don't make an excuse, like be a professional, like we're pros now. Right. So it's like, be a professional powerlifter. If you know, you're going to be competing at a certain time, be there and be there uh, and, and make accommodations towards that. So there's no way I would have ever allowed me traveling across the world to be an excuse. Um, I just looked at it. It's like, okay, I have to travel how many ever hours, make sure I'm comfortable, make sure I'm, I'm, I'm well hydrated and fed and, and recovered by the time the meet shows up. Um, but I will say, I mean, it wasn't easy. It was difficult. You know, I mean, we're the total travel time was about like a day. Like it was like 20 hours. Yeah. And uh, on top of that, like, I don't know what it is about the food in Korea, but it was like, it just, man, you, you could only eat like one to two meals a day. Cause that shit will knock you out. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, shit. I'll, I'd, I'd it, probably it, be a hundred kilo, man. Had to be like high sodium or high fat or what? I don't know. But had I was, if I was trying to cut it to the 82.5s, oh my God, that would have been hard for sure. It would have been very difficult. So um travel was travel was it was long, but it was it was it was fine. I mean, like I, I always make adjustments. That's what I like to pride myself on, is being able to adjust to the thing. I, there's no way you'll ever see me make some type of excuse in a meet recap talking about, oh, the travel time was long. So da da da. It's like well, it's probably easier because you take the get better today private jet though. <laughs> <laughs> you got either girlies way, in there. It's a video, <laughs> man. Come on. No, nah, either either way, man. There's no way I would make like it. I'm not an excuse maker. It's just like, okay, this is what we have to do. Okay, cool. Let's do it. In ahead of time, so you going in there was 85 then to take the number one spot. That was essentially, that was the end goal after you read some comments. You're like, this is what we're here to do. And Joey was on board and he's like, all right, let's 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 go all in then. Yeah, so it was, uh, the conversation was, uh, it was just that one, like he, he made those posts and then I started, I sat in bed and I was like, what is it, like, what is this month? What, what did he hit? What did he hit at Nashville's? Right. So I, 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 never I never, I never checked the database myself. So I'll, I'll text Joe. I'm like, man, what does he hit at nationals? Then he said the number. I was looking at my training. I was like, all right, cool. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take that. 
Let's go ahead and take that. I said a perfect shirt for myself would be 880 to 890. If I get, I told, I told him, I was like, if I hit eight, eight, if I hit 880 to 890, I'm talking shit. So, <laughs> so that was the main goal. Like I would have, I would have been, um, I wouldn't have been okay with anything less. And we literally hit like in the middle of what we wanted to do. Um, I said, if it was 895, which was on the, which is on the cards, I just didn't execute. Um, I would have, y'all would have saw like a lot more to be honest. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it would have been it was so long. this was tame yeah this it was tame because i was like i was like i don't deserve to i don't deserve to talk crazy like that because i didn't hit that number <laughs> dude it was still entertaining yeah you were like look at i got some michael jordan clips already clipped up we're ready to go it's gotta be 880 funny because i had none of that ready to go i was just sitting in my bed and i was just like let me get this let me get that let me get this let me get that i'm just, I'm just like scrolling through and finding different stuff yeah is it um so you could basically tell off of your training numbers. Cause here's the thing. Sometimes when people move up, I've had people on the podcast talk about like, they didn't even fully know where they were at. Or sometimes when you move up, you're like, I, I could somewhat estimate where I think my strength is, but yeah. it's same with cutting down. And, um, you know, by the time you went for your last deadlift and it was going to be 885, if you got it, you yeah. didn't hit that. Now you were all in, there's no turning back. And it would have been a different story all over. Be like, you know what he was going for. Who yeah. knows, man, maybe Petrie's back in his, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm for sure. For sure. my title. Yeah. So you were uh, all in by that point. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he told me the number, he told me like, okay, we could do two things. We could hit this. And I'm like, man, that ain't, I ain't gonna hit the same. I was like, I need that. Eight, <laughs> I need that eight eighty five. And then also, it was just like, I think it was like seven thirty eight that we did, and it, it felt really good. And I had, I had battled seven eighty four, and and just barely missed it. Um, so I was like, yo, just load seven seventy one. I mean, obviously, like we're in a meet, uh, meet context. So it's like I had just I had squatted and whatever. Um, so I was like, okay, let me do seven seventy seven seventy one. I'm like, this is gonna be a grinder. But I, I think I got it. And it just ended up being a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, but still got it. So how was the hospitality there in South Korea? Listen, I had, um, Esther's been on the podcast a couple of times. She's amazing. Yeah. Dude, yeah. she fucking loves you. She loves Joey yeah. and the whole thing. And she's like, yeah. I, my dream was to meet Russ at a meet. So yeah. I, and then when I see the videos and pictures of her, like all like backstage with you guys, I'm sure she's like, anything you want, let me know. But how was it over there in, in South Korea? It was amazing, man. Like I'm, I'm thankful. We had like a, we had a meetup prior and it was just very, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. And I understand that there's, there's an international interest in what I do. So it's just another experience of just humbleness. Like where it's just like, damn, like what I'm doing here in America travels like everywhere. Um, so it was, it was amazing, man. Shout out to the career crew. Um, they made sure we were good. They did everything for me. I had to go to, I had to take a COVID test to, to go to Japan. They literally took me the day before. It was just a lot of oh, different shit. things they were super accommodating with. So yeah, it was it was amazing to be out there. Is Weez now, when I had spoken to him, he's going to go down to Texas for like a few months. Is he like full-time there? This is it. Yeah, he's full-time here now. Oh yeah. shit, man. You're starting to build a bit of a crew down there now. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. corrupted strength. And how many of you guys flew out to South Korean Japan? So I, so it was four of us. It was me, Weez, my camera guy, Duhon, um, and Joey. And then Japan was like a solo trip with my best friend. Like to, we had some business stuff to do too, but it was like a business personal trip. Dude, Japan looks freaking amazing. I've never been to Japan, man. I gotta go to Japan, dude. I have to. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, I can't wait. Not I cannot wait to go back. It was dope. Um, do you plan on going back to like South Korea? Have they spoken about, cause what it is crazy what they seem to be doing out there. First they brought out Ashton and then um, Keenan and Ashton going toe to toe Ashton having to go, win on body weight, put everybody on notice. Everyone's like, Holy, Holy fuck. Where did this guy come from? And yeah. then, um, you know, so Keenan's a monster they have out there. Yeah. Or do you anticipate going back? Um, no, I mean, it's not like I'm like, I mean, I'm, I want to go back cause it's amazing, but right. Um, I think there's, I mean, there's a lot of different federations or not a lot of federations. There's a different branches of USAPL that are kind of reaching out now, like China, Australia, UK. Oh shit. Yeah. So it might just be like something where every single year I might just do a different meet in a different country. Do a bit of a tour, man. Yeah. I was thinking about that. I was like, that sounds a lot more intriguing than just like doing the same meet over and over because I almost want to become an ambassador for the USAPL. 
Um, and I think that doing these meets really helps just like with, with the culture of powerlifting in different countries. So just period for the culture, yeah. you know, let alone it's, it's, it probably be, it's, is amazing for the USAPL. And then on top of that for you, um, I mean, it's great to like tour around the world like this and, yeah. and meet so many people and whatnot. And then apparently it doesn't affect you at all. Like that's probably the worst it's going to be is over there in Asia. Yeah. 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 That's how right? <laughs> it ain't gonna get worse that's for sure yeah um what different usapls are you thinking though like nothing too too firmed up or nothing too firmed up i've just seen interest i think uh i think a couple of federations i think a couple of branches sent me up i think it was like australia china for sure and i think the uk as well so china hey eh? yeah right if yeah. they're onboarding china that'd be very interesting yeah it's gonna be fun. I I I was just looking at it. I was like, I'm probably gonna pick like a meet a year to do. Yeah, because you can only obviously can only do so much. You got mega nats. Yeah, I, I have to limit myself to two a year. I can't do anything more than that. Is that yeah? Is that you think the sweet spot then? Because some people freaking compete often, man. I don't think that's smart, but it depends if you're not cutting or cutting. I guess too, like not cutting probably helps. But do you think cutting? Or, or how do you feel about it? Do you think maybe if you go 90, it'll be easier? I don't think. I just, I'm a person that likes progress. I don't like doing meet to me because it's like, how much can you really progress if you're doing meet to me and constantly doing different um, peaking cycles, right? So I just prefer to just have a meet or two a year because um, you can definitely see the progress on that. Um, I just, I look at competing as a very serious matter. I don't like, right. I don't like, stacking it up like candy like it's it's very important it should be very unique to the process so to just do like four meets a year five meets that's way too much and to an extent i could see where you i have seen some people where they don't have progress it yeah. isn't like going to keep going infinitely if you keep because you keep peaking in the in the off season isn't enough to add on those kilos like yeah. with you and joey there was leading into mega nats like joey had said it was a shame that you got injured because your fucking off season was insane dude you yeah. were shifting some crazy numbers before you got injured yeah but i do think if you're constantly competing and showing up yeah i think it stagnates it i think it cuts it short yeah you know sure. building that foundation yeah for sure that's the biggest thing for me it's just like you have to give yourself, especially with someone that has been like myself that's been lifting for so long. Like I need as long as the off season I could get to stack as many chips as I can. So the next time I step on that platform is going to be different than the last time I stepped on the platform. Cause I want to see that progress. I want to feel that progress. Um, if I'm doing meet to meet, like I'm just going to be the same person every single time I step right. on the platform, you know? And it's difficult to do like an RP eight meet. That's so demotivating. Yeah. Why are you yeah. doing it? Yeah. It's, it's pointless. Might as well just stay at home. And even when you say it was RPE meet, I was just staying busy, whatever the hell, everyone's going to use that number against you if they want to be a hater. They I, just I, I, I was telling, I was telling a Weez this, it's like every single time you step on the platform, it's showtime. No one cares about how many meets you did or whatever. Like those numbers are there. Yeah. Like you don't, I don't play with that. So it's like every single time I step on the platform, that's the best version of myself that I had for that period of time. I'm not going to be keep, I'm not going to keep doing meets mindless, uh, mindlessly doing meets. Like, oh, I'm practicing. It's like, no, that's that's stupid. Yeah. In my humble opinion. Well, you're I mean, you've done this for so long. You don't need more yeah. practice. You've been yeah, exactly. in so many scenarios at this point. What do um, you really need practice with? Like people use that. It's like, oh, I just wanted to, you know, practice. It's like practice for what? Like it's just squat bench deadlift, bro. Like it's not yeah. <laughs> like the only reason would be if they're like if they're practicing cutting or whatever the hell, like that's not the case. Moving up to 90 is like total opposite. Yeah. But um or whatever. But yeah, to the point of when you're a career 82 and a half, you've done this for years. It's all yeah. sorted. We're all, yeah. we're all good right now. We're all sorted right now. There's not too much else you're going to do. Um, with 2022 coming to a close, who do you think is the lifter of the year? 2022. You could say male, female tested, untested. You could just give one. Here's a couple things. Here's a couple things. That because we were we having this in the discussion. Mm. Obviously, Bob Matthews at the highest dots. On the flip side, there's three guys clustered super close: Bob, Ashton, Keenan, and all within like Keenan at 102 kilos and a bit, just as out total Bob. Like in the 110 kilo class, Keenan is in the lead, then Ashton, then Bob. But Bob also won Mega Nats as a 100, not mm. as a 110, but. 
when we're saying 110, Keenan is like 102 point something. It's not like he's a real 110. They're all very yeah. close. So while Bob can raise his hand and be like, I beat you guys on on uh, dots, mm-hmm. I also won Mega Nat's best lifter. Keenan could say straight up, though, I've out-totaled you. I granted, I was a weight class up, but I was only two and a half kilo over body weight of you. A lot of people would say we're comparable body weight. So then mm-hmm. it becomes like a freaking, it's 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 tough. And then on the other side, you got a guy like Jesus Oliveras who mm-hmm. would say, look, fuck all the formulas, whatever. Like I'm the strongest power lifter in the tested period. What he did at PA Nats was phenomenal. Obviously that's a Joey Flex disciple as well. Uh, one world's again under adversity, injured, whatever. Uh, then you got yourself who's now won two weight classes, you know, if not one, then at the top of two weight classes, let's say like a Leah Bavla, right? Yeah, yeah. She's a world champion. One took the world title in the other. So mm. it kind of depends on what you like. Mm. Um, how do we split this? It's very, it's a tough conversation. Um, I'm gonna give it to Jesus. I feel like Jesus doesn't get enough, uh, get enough credit and love. Is doesn't he have like the biggest total period? Like, um, he's got the biggest total period it, uh, in this year, and maybe maybe Erin can pull this up. Who even in the t- untested, I don't know if the in 2022, I don't know if another heavyweight beat him. I, I put up a poll on it's King of Lifts poll, so it's not like a personal poll. Jesus put up or whatever, right? So yeah. it's King of Lifts poll, even ground. Jesus Oliveras won. I think it's I was a, a little shocked by that. I come from I come from football where like I don't like big boys lead the weight room right. and yeah. those are the dogs. So I got to give it to Jesus, man. I mean, you're he's he's doing things that untested dudes can't do. Um, squatting a thousand pounds is no joke, and yeah. uh, he has a world title with that too. So I think Jesus, man, he's been on a roll, man. So I I, I give it to Jesus personally. What, has anyone beat him, Arian? For for raw. He has the highest total at eleven ten for this year, um, tested or untested. The next closest is ten sixty five, and um, the local meet that Ray Williams just did, he did ten ten. So Jesus is a hundred kilos above what Ray just did at the local meet. So yeah, I mean that that's some the big numbers, and he's close to Ray's all time best and, and world record total. So I mean, when you're number one tested or untested, fuck man, yeah, that in the is- untested they got some big boys. Yeah, and it, I just feel like he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Um, yeah, he just, I, I, yeah. Can you just imagine walking to a gym and just seeing someone squat like a thousand pounds, and then on top of that, he could pull like nine hundred. It's a lot. He's man. a monster. Yeah, he yeah. can pull nine hundred. He can <laughs> he can squat a G, pull nine hundred. Uh, yeah. The bench is moving, man. Yeah, we'll see what he does. Yeah, he's a big boy. And I come from football, so it's like you walk into a football locker room, you say, "Hey, Zeus, that's hey man, that's 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 top G right there." So it's like, "Hey, man, that's, that's, top, that's top G right yeah. there." Yeah. Um, what about the women's side? We have uh, obviously Leah Babwa, who is the number one sixty three missed worlds, came back, took the sixty three kilo world t- uh, record, and it out totaled the sixty nine kilo world record. So she's a weight class below beating everybody a weight class up. She's got the number one dots. She's got the number one GL points as well as two world records. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you have like Jess Bittner who, t- who did compete at worlds and, mm-hmm. and probably the best showdown at worlds beat Agatha Shitko right down to the very last deadlift. And the la- if that last deadlift she needed to win in a head to head matchup was the biggest deadlift in all of tested women's powerlifting. So it was like a fucking Hail Mary. What do I need? And she's not in the biggest weight class. Like, you you know, yeah. so it's like, what do I need? Well, it's the biggest deadlift we've ever seen. Load it and she wins it. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a difficult, it's really in my book between them two. Turbo Tiff won Worlds and won Best Lifter at Worlds as well. Mm-hmm. So it's really between those three. So it depends what you like. Do mm-hmm. you like Turbo Tiff winning, winning the Worlds as well, showdown with Heather Connor and winning Best Lifter? Do you like Jessica Bittner winning the tightest showdown with the biggest Hail Mary lift at the end and the biggest lift period we've ever seen in terms of deadlifts and women's? Or do you like the Leah Bavwa comeback story out-totaling a weight class above her, which neither of the other two ladies did in terms of sheer dominance where she's like head and shoulders above every single body in her weight class and a weight class up? Mm. That was done in a local setting type of thing? Um, it was done at Arnold 
classic. Here's here's the caveat. That's a good question. I'm glad. Okay, I like how your mind's going. That's a good question. So, um, it was done Arnold Classic. So it was international judging, and you know, fucking IPF yeah. international judging right. might be too stiff sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but that's another discussion. And the girl that was she was going against Carola Gara, who was the previous world champion at 63 kilo. Um, beat Sam Calhoun. Beat her for the mm. world title. Won the world title in equipment. Won the world title out of equipment. And um, is like a fuck. She's she's the number one picture. It's you and Brandon in the ninety, or you and Jamar in eighty two point five. That's who was there waiting for her to do that. So she was she was. Yeah, so, so she had no competition. Damn it, Arian! Get that right that time. <laughs> My fucking man. Man, shout out to Jamar, man. I'm playing. Uh, yeah, I don't. Think it's good. It's juicy stuff. Oh, yeah, it's fucking fun, man. It's fucking fun. Um, I give it to uh, I give it to Turbo because I, I that the IPF stage is very important to me. Um, Leah fumbled that. All respect to her. I sent her a message about it. Um, but I mean, if you, if you're not showing up on the the IPF stage, I can't give that to you. In my opinion. Um, so I, I have to give it to Turbo just because I mean. She, she beat Heather, which is like she's Heather was is like one of the goats. You know what I'm right. saying? Like she was putting up like insane numbers, and she was able to knock her off. And then she showed up, and she showed out. Man, that, that I, I watched that performance, and I was like, shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you got. I feel like it was. just, I remember watching it, and I was impressed. And I was like, oh shit. So uh, personally, I would give it to Turbo, IPF champ. Um, also to augment that, best lifter. At IPF World, so it has to be her, in my opinion. And you're right. To do so, she had to unseat the 47 kilo goat up to that yeah. point. Yeah. You know, so she had very stiff opposition. Yeah. yeah fair enough. I'm sure Turbo Tiff when she hears this, be like, oh fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. yeah. My thing is like, that's that's the pinnacle. Like, that's the pinnacle. She showed up and she did her thing. Um, what Lydia did was was dope, but it's just like that was done. Like, that's not that's not the pinnacle, in my opinion. So. Um, it's dope to have that comeback story to end the year off, but I can't, I can't give that performance. I can't, I can't put that performance over someone that did it when it mattered. And then, you know, did it against someone that has been a pillar in powerlifting for a very long time. And then with Butner, or how do you say Butner or Butner? Butner. It's Butner. My fault. Um, she, she actually says the, the pronunciation of my name is unreasonable and I'll take whatever. <laughs> that's, that's how she words it. Yeah, that's dope too. What she did was dope too. I, I I like tight matchups because tight matchups are no joke either. Um, I just got turbo over that, to be honest. Do you when you picture um, like does that sway your opinion at all? Do you yearn for those? Because you've been in it, you've been you've been in dog fights, so you've been battle tested. Do you yearn for that? And does that help sway you for that? moving on to the 90 kilo bit, you know, I fucking, I kind of, uh, I wouldn't mind a dog fight or are you like, I don't know if I go full, I guess you would, like you said, I don't think <laughs> a dog fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I like it because not everyone's built for it. And you find that out when you're in the, so you have the paper, right? You got the piece of paper. You got to lift your A, you got to lift your B. On paper, you think it's close, right? But lifter B hasn't gone against lifter A head to head. And I've seen it. You can't, everyone watching it, everyone watching or listening to this, there's the aspect of going head to head with someone that you just cannot, you cannot put on paper. Like when I'm in that back room, best example, uh, best example is last year or this year's nationals. We saw it and I had Wee's backstage with me because I wanted him to see it. There's a different air when you are walking around someone that you, that, that could take what you want. Hmm. So like, for me, I love it because it brings the best out of me. Cause I'm like, ooh, like I like this shit. Like not everyone's built for it. And I like to play a little, not mind, like, yeah, I mean, you can call it mind games, but I'm in the back, like just feeling people out. I walk close next to someone just to kind of let them know I'm there. Um, I literally walk on someone's platform, you know what I'm saying? With oh, like, yeah, I walk I mean, hey man, I walk on someone's platform, this, that, and the third. And if, if it calls for it, I'll start talking shit. Like I'll just, you know. I'll, I'll literally just be that there, like, clapping like, "Oh, these motherfuckers don't want this." And <laughs> oh, I'm showing you, like, like I said, I have an athlete's mindset. A lot of these people don't like that gets in their head. Like, it literally it bothers them and it stresses them out because they're like, "Why is this guy bothered?" Or why, why, like, you know, why is he doing this? And that little bit of stress causes you to fumble on the platform. I'm telling you, like, 
it's different when you're on that national stage and you walk up to the platform, it's nothing but bright lights. You can't really see too well. You know, you hear squat and now you're freaking out. You're like, oh shit, your legs start quivering. Now that 661 you're supposed to hit turns into like 640, 630. But for me personally, I'm like, oh, I'm talking all this shit. I got to back this up. So I'm looking into the lights. I'm looking into the judge's eyes. I'm like, oh, I got to get this. So if anything, it boosts my performance. But when you have that head to head, it just brings something out of you or it turns you into like something that, you know, someone that shies away from that type of matchup. So you, you like cortisol levels. And when you start getting wound up, you get more tired a lot quicker. Oh. And by the time you get the deads and you're gassed out sometimes and people talk like that, oh, deads yeah. didn't show up today. Well, deads didn't show up today. Sure. But there's a, there's reasons why. And you could help someone along the way. When they start falling the ball, when start, you can help raise their cortisol levels, help raise that energy output when they don't need to. They can't. The coaches be like, sit down, settle down, take your yeah. music off, bring the heart rate down a little bit. We got, we're here three hours. You can't yeah. stay in for three hours. Yep. You can help somebody stay in for three hours by yep. walking over the fucking platform and uh, doing the shit you're doing to keep their fucking up. They can't come back down and relax a little bit. You're keeping the pressure on them. They're done squatting. You're fucking reaching over, unclasping their belt. I'm like, don't put your hand around me. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> I'm so weird. Oh my god. Be, be like, Please don't put your hand around me like that, dog. Yeah, that yeah. is very alpha. That's very deep. <laughs> because, like, when you think about it, like all these matchups be super. Like everyone's like, "Oh, good job, bro. <laughs> good lift." I'm like, man, fuck that. Like, I ain't yeah, trying yeah. to. Do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I've been in those back rooms where everyone's like super buddy buddy. I'm not really about that. Unless I'm winning, but like if, <laughs> you know, like I, I just, I believe there's that aspect of like, there's only so much you could do to affect someone in powerlifting because it's a very indiv uh, individual sport. So I'm going to take every avenue I can to kind of like help um, get the outcome that I want. So if I know a lifter thinks way too much, which a lot of these guys do, there's little things I'll do to just kind of like, you know, put some pressure on them a little bit to make them kind of maybe press for something or just make them feel under uh, make them feel uncomfortable under a weight that they normally would hit in training all the time. A famous quote, um, Roberto Duran recognized that Sugar Ray Leonard, who was like America's poster boy in the eighties, nineties, whatever. Um, they were scheduled to fight. And he noticed that this guy keeps talking to me to alleviate stress and bring it down a little the tension. He keeps trying to be friendly with me. Yeah. Even though we're going to compete, he'll try to be, just talk to me and be like, Hey man, like try to be when the lights aren't around, try, trying to alleviate the tension a little bit. And yeah. he's like, and Roberto Duran said, I recognize that. And I know why he's doing it. You yeah. feel tense and it makes you feel less tense to be a little buddy, buddy with me to see me like a person, not yeah. see me like the monster you have to face, but humanize me. And you feel better about that. He asked me, he goes, he asked me about my fucking kids. He's like, he's, you know, he says it is, <laughs> is, is like Spanish machismo accent. He goes, he goes, I know you don't give a fuck about my kids. Yeah. Right. Like he was, you'd want to humanize me. And then yeah. after the fight, he beat Sugar Ray up. Very first loss of Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray won the rematch, by the way, but he beat Sugar Ray up. And Ray was out. He just was out of it. He, he doesn't know why he was out of it. And then afterwards, Roberto Duran grabs the mic, goes, Hey, Ray. We could be friends now. <laughs> it is like, oh shit. And that's what it is. Kind of like you said, like, we could be friends if I'm winning. Yeah. You know, if I got it locked up after the second deadlift and I've already yeah. won, I'll let's sell it. I'll cheer on your third. Let's be loosen up a bit more. But it's funny because I this past nationals, I pulled up to uh to weigh-ins and um I mean I had like my my crew with me and everything and the suit and all that. And when I got there, like they're they were talking amongst themselves, like just dapping each other up and stuff i'm like what is this man like i'm not i'm like what like what are we really here for are we here to be buddy buddy are we here to try to get the common common win here or uh, the common goal so i pulled up i never i don't talk to my, i don't talk to the ops when it's time to go so i'm just like i pull up i'm just minding my business waiting for wins i'm not talking to nobody like i don't you know everyone's different but i, don't, I just don't do all that camaraderie ship whenever it's time to uh it's time to compete it's um yeah it's just about a mental edge and i feel like as well like we were talking about like like jesus is so kindly spoken and mel well mannered in terms of the way he speaks right mm -hmm. but i bet you if he came on here talking like russell orhey after five w's in a row holy <laughs> shit so what we were talking about like what pops but on the flip side like you don't want to force it 
that's not how you, if that's not where your mindset is at, you know what I mean? Like that's not, it's funny how they're all different. And he recognizes that, like, that's the way you think and whatnot. He's talked about it on the podcast as well. And um, yeah, don't force it. Just stay in your fucking lane. Not everybody is going to be fucking Russ and Taylor or Roberto Duran and Mike Tyson-esque, right? Like, no, everybody's got to do that. Just be whoever the fuck you are. And yeah. uh, eventually the victories will, will rack up. It's genuine. That's why I think so many people rally behind when you say, because it comes off differently. Yeah. Right? Hey, you have to, you have to have your own approach, man. Um, going back to that podcast that you guys had with Leia and Taylor and everything, um, that discussion about how I made those comments about I'm the hardest worker in the room. And I, I chalked that up to everyone has different approaches on how they like to go about life or powerlifting or whatever you want to say. Um, and that's cool. And what, you have to focus on too is just staying in your lane. My lane, this works for me. I love it. You know, um, if if someone tried to do what I did, it might they might think too much. Right. Might, the pressure is a little bit too much for them because I, I I mean I put a lot of pressure on myself. When you talk, when you talk shit and you you talk about what you've done, it puts a lot of pressure on you. Um, and then also too, like you just have a lot of people wanting what you, what you have. So you have to keep backing that up. Not everyone's built like that. Like people don't like being disliked like people really dislike that so it gets in their mind and that stress makes you feel like jittery and when you go train it's just your training session ain't hidden the way it's supposed to be hidden because you're someone that you're not and that's really difficult to get past um so yeah if you're if you're a quiet mild a mild mannered person stick to that stick to your guns and and win your own way but me i'm gonna gonna talk about shit because that's just kind of how i am so well, some people you hear them on like whether it's podcast comments or whatever, and it seems like you're you're a personality. Mm. Like you're doing a social media personality. Like you know, like that's not actually how you are in real life when you oh, see people sure, yeah. or whatever. Like see a lot of people do that where it's like um you're trying to pop, like this isn't real. That you could tell though, like you're going out of your way to be a certain way. Uh, yeah. the difference is with yourself. You're just like, same with like Taylor or whatever. If that's why it rings different, mm. you know, it rings completely different and people can recognize and I can appreciate that. Where it's like, no, 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 man, this is, this is really how he preps. This is really how, when he goes into these competitions, how he feels. This is yeah. really how like, a, like he could fly across the world and bring the same energy. Whereas like, a, or whoever he's going head to head with year after year after year or deal with the pressure of like, like you said, all these fucking comments coming at you. So if you're actually outside a pocket and you're not being you, and then these comments come at you being like, fucking this guy's an asshole, whatever the hell. And you're like, you're like, fucking, uh, I don't know if I can deal with this. Like you're just, it's getting more, you know, it's just yeah. like, it'll start getting more heat. Then when the competition comes, you're like, am I about to be exposed? I'm starting to feel imposter syndrome is real. Imposter syndrome will come to everybody at some point, but it's come a lot harder when you're not being your authentic self, For sure. you know, it, it, it works. People can get a gathering being that guy or that girl, you know what I mean? But it's a lot tougher. It's a lot. It, I don't think the shelf life is year after year after year. Yeah. If it's like a, if it's not authentic, so yeah. it's easier for you to just do your thing. And if you're not Russell Lee or Taylor or whoever the hell that talks, I can let your winning do, do, do it for you. It's funny because there's a, uh, I've seen, I've seen people, you know, they pop shit and then they, they, they don't have the meat that they want and they just go quiet. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're not, I'm like, yeah, you're not like that. So stop talking like that. <laughs> they just go, you know what I'm saying? And then, yeah, that meat recap never comes. So it's, yeah, well, you can't, yeah, exactly. Here's another thing too. Some people, if you're small enough in terms of following, you just don't post it up. And then like, the, it's kind of shitty, but no, one will even ask because how many people super care? Whereas Russell or he can't dodge a meat recap. People are going to, you know what I mean? You, you can't, yeah. everyone knows what you're about to do before you do it. And like the pressure's on, you can't dodge. Yeah. And it's a whole nother level of, I've used this quote a bunch of times. Like this type of pressure is a gift. Yeah. Um, and because people care. Yeah. On the flip side, you will never in your life be able to just go fucking silent on a re- me- recap. Like, holy fuck, I bombed or holy shit. You know, I built this up and I took an L because whatever. I got injured and I tried. It shit happens. It's yeah. eventually sometime something's going to happen. Yeah. You 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 almost like, like I'm going to have to fucking, I'm going to have to face it. I'm going to have to meek recap this shit. It is what it is. For sure. And I'm always, and I've, I've, I think every single time I get on this podcast, I'm, 
not prepared for failure, but I'm I'm ready. I'm willing to accept it because I put I put myself out there. And that's just part of the game. I know at some point there's going to be a fuck up. I, I might bomb. I might um, tremendously underperform. Own up to it, man. You just got to sit up there and, and, you know, you got to sit up there and take it because you're you're brash enough to put yourself out there. At some point, there's gonna you're going to hit a wall, which is fine. Um, but you can't let that be the final chapter of your story. You're going to push past that wall. So I'm never like, it's a weird concept because I never envisioned failure but like, I understand if it does come, I'm going to have to just own up to it and then just push past it. It's not that big of a deal. It's not going to be the end of my <laughs> end of my career and anything like that. So every time you draw your sword in a duel, you know, like you're confident in yeah. your skills, but you know, you're, yeah. you know, I, whatever it is. I respect, I respect the game enough to know, like every single time I step on that platform, anything can happen. So, yeah. And people who will talk shit, if a, like, especially if it's dynasty, how are you going to talk shit now? Like, like, are you going to say I never was good? Like, well, I mean, it's already, it's already over, right? Like, it's kind of like, but anyone who talks shit now, a lot of times when they, when you're doing what they, they wish they could, like they, some people straight up avoid situations because they, if, if they fail, so they just don't do it or they won't, or they'll, or they'll do it, but not get too brash. Cause what if I fucking lose or what if I don't, so they don't get brash and it all this, you're going to take the heat all the shit they're too afraid to do because you weren't. And they fucking hate that. They hate that in you because they see that in cowardness in them. Yeah. Because you're that, brash. There's this lifter um, that he didn't do it me because the pressure is too much. And I was like, that's why you should do it. <laughs> I, was like, that's, I was like, I can't relate to shit like that. <laughs> like, that's all I, I was like, I was like, can't relate to that because Every, that's why I said like every single time you step on that platform, it's a representation of your hard work. So it's like the pressure, that's that's what comes with being good at what you do. That's the point. Um, so to run away from me, it's because it's too much pressure. You're just not built for it. You're not built like that. So, Or some people's liturgy, like to your point of people getting rattled in the warm up room and people are like, it's powerlifting. People don't actually get rattled. Mm. I'll tell you straight up. I'll tell you straight up. I have people in my DM saying, you know, when you hype these showdowns and you hype, this guy said this, this girl said that. When you hype that, you put a lot of pressure on people. So yeah. I've had many people over the years be like, like athletes, coaches be like, Ryan, it makes it difficult. Like it's very stressful. And I'm like, I, I know it is. I know when I build these, these showdowns up for years and you wait, know. Wait, 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 Ryan, I'm so sorry. Wait, when you build these showdowns up, those lifters hit you and be like, hey, can you chill out? Doggy? All right, man. This is why I say like we just I just don't relate to something like what the hell, man. I don't I don't get stuff like that, man. Like, like, like I, from I, I've heard it too, like from the preview shows, if we all pick someone, then it puts more stress on them. Or if we say, like, you know, someone makes a lot of their attempts, they're like, Oh shit, they think I make a lot of attempts, I gotta keep making it. What if I screw what up? The hell, man. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, I just don't relate to stuff like that. So when I say certain things like it just doesn't hit with the community the same way because a lot of these people I'm telling you they're overthinkers and like I see it and I hear about it and I have conversations with these top these quote unquote top level lifters and they just that mentality that that they don't have I'm just like that's really interesting because to me like you lean into those things to make you better it just sharpens your knife so like if y'all get in here and you guys hype up a matchup like I mean I like what y'all say but that's just more motivation for me to kind of like prove y'all wrong or prove y'all right or whatever so I just, yeah, sorry. I Dude, I, just, I, I couldn't believe what was coming out of your mouth when you were saying, I'm like, there's no way. Like, could you imagine you're hyping up a, a, me, a showdown between me and somebody else? And I hit you on the side. I'm like, hey, hey, Ryan. It's getting too hot. Hey, Ryan. The heat's making, too hot. I can't sleep at night because you keep posting about how, like, yeah. this is going to be a close matchup. Can you stop, please? Yeah, yeah. What the hell, man? The, 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 the kitchen's getting too hot. I, like, coaches have come in the DMs as well and been like, and said, like, man, it's it's it puts a lot of pressure on athletes. You gotta you gotta understand. And I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, like I'm like, if I don't do this, nobody cares. Like, like not not just me, but like just period. Oh, like, we, right. we don't have like media. We have to do this. We yeah. need to like make people be like, fuck, I don't know, I don't know. Like, even if I think, even, fuck off. <laughs> I know. Well, it's like it's like even if I think like 
even if I think so and so is probably going to win, I need to at least advocate. But you never know, yeah. and you got to you I, you need to bring intrigue, especially when you're like commentating the event live. You can never be like, well, this is probably going to be so and so going to win right through, right through, right through. Yeah, and they did win as we all thought they would. Like, nah, yeah. man, it's not how it goes. But I've never seen you be disrespectful to take personal shots. So like anything other than that, I think it's fair game, man. I mean, like just grow up. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell y'all coaches or y'all lifters, like grow up and accept the pressure. Like this is sports. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like you can't, you can't hit somebody and say, Hey, stop talking about me winning because it's, it's stressing me out. Like the hell it's a, so hey. like just to your point in terms of um, psychological games and how it could play. Yeah, it can. Like people yeah. try to downplay and be like, no, no, not in powerlifting. Yes. Yes. And for the, for the people that are watching, yeah, for the people that are watching that aren't necessarily in the sport, like trust me, your favorite lifter is an overthinker. So like if <laughs> if they see their ops or their competition like post the lift that's too close to them, they're gonna start hitting their coach, like, hey, I'm not sure if I can do this anymore. Da 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 this that third, like that. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling yeah. y'all they get bothered like that. And I see like I hear about these stories and I'm like, can't relate. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've seen it too. I mean, sometimes it could be coincidence, but sometimes it doesn't seem like coincidence. Like a uh, top lifter will put up like a 600 pound deadlift. And then a few days later, a week later, the top competitor will put up like a 605 pound deadlift just to be like, oh, I did more. Yep. Yep. And just to make them feel better. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but our programs don't link up the same way. So me doing this 605 is completely different from your 605 because this is going to plan into something better. So yeah, lifters do that all the time too. They'll try to chase things that they shouldn't be chasing. And they end up like over chasing and then affects mm. the training. And I'm like, that's your, that's your overthinking come, uh, kicking in. Like, so it, it, then, you know, like if you did, let's you do a 700 squat yeah. and whatever ops, the 705, you know, like it could be coincidence, but if there's a, if it happens consistently, you're almost telling yourself, you think um, because you're going to five pounds more, you're in the lead, but I'm in the lead. Cause I'm leading the dance. Apparently, yeah. apparently yeah. I'm leading the dance. Yeah. It's, but uh, George Foreman was fighting Michael Michael Moore. George Foreman was like 45. Michael Moore was 26. And George Foreman and Michael Moore were face-to-face. -face. George Foreman was super, like, friendly in all the press conferences. But when they're face-to-face, George Foreman's from uh, uh, Houston. He's from, like, he's from the bad sections. Like, he's fucking thorough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he super nice. But when they're face-to-face, -face, Michael Moore had his glasses on. He knew he was scared. And he's like... <laughs> so George Foreman just goes when they're face-to-face. -face, like, when the cameras couldn't hear him why are you wearing glasses? <laughs> and then, and then nothing more. That's all that need to be said. A question. Yeah. So you'll go home and you'll question the question. It's yeah. a question that you're going to ask yourself. Why was I wearing? Glasses? So next time they went face to face, Michael Moore has glasses off. Made sure I ain't going to fucking wear my glasses. The second face to face they're on tour. And when they go face to face, Michael bar George Foreman goes, I see. I made you take off your glasses. Yeah, I was like, I was thinking about like, like, keep the glasses no. on, bro. Don't take them off. Now, now he's like, you're nervous, <laughs> exactly. and, and I'm in your head, exactly. and now you're second. You, I made you go home and think about it, didn't I? Yep, yep, yep. And yep. then, and then, like George Foreman knocked him out. And it's uh. So, anyways, it is like you don't, you don't want to let your, even if you think oh, I'm doing five five pounds more every time or whatever. Now he's leading the dance. He's probably not even thinking about you. Yeah. And if people get back to him. He'll be like, you're going to change your, you changed your workout because of what I'm doing. I don't even know what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. I'm leading the dance, I guess. Yeah. You see that happen as well in power. We know this happens in powerlifting. We, yeah. There's stories of one guy's leading a dance and then another guy's following. And it's dangerous to start operating like that. It puts pressure on you when you're it's all about following somebody. Yeah. I remember, um, Sean used to do that with me a lot. Like he would just, we would, uh, it would be our deadlifts because that's that's where our <clears throat> our deadlifts are pretty comparable to each other. And I would deadlift one thing, he'd deadlift another thing. I'd deadlift one thing, he'd deadlift another thing. And uh, yeah. And then he ended up saying like, I'm going to close the flight on deadlifts. And then he did not close the flight on deadlifts. <laughs> it's tough. Like yeah. I, you know, I get like, we all need goals, right? But the, the one thing is if your goal is the other person too much, it, they, they, again, they're leading it, right? Yeah. They're, they're in you, they're in your head. And it becomes... It changes things as opposed to like, do you goal set often to beat a particular person or do you goal set to like hit numbers, take titles, but not necessarily a certain person? Cause then that becomes, that's how you, you empower the person to get into your head. Yeah, no. So it's like a fine line. Um, I use people, I use people that people say 
is close to me as motivation because I, this is my competitive mind athlete talking. Um, I don't think people are close to me if I'm on. Like if I'm on, I'm focused. I don't think anyone's close to me, whether that's true or not. That's just how I approach things. So I don't, there's no lifter that lives like rent free in my head. I'm not, I'm not going home and thinking about what so-and-so did in the gym. I could, don't really care. Um, it's more so just like the conversation that motivates me. I'm like, oh, see, I'll, I'll think this is close to me, huh? Okay, bet. Because I, I, I don't think he's close to me, you know what I'm saying? So I go into the gym with that type of motivation. Not so much so as like, oh, this person hit X, Y, and Z. I need to hit X, Y, and Z. It's just like, oh, y'all think this person's close to me? Let me sharpen my training, my personal training, my personal individualized training to the best of my ability and then show on the meet day, like, okay, this person's like nowhere close to me. But I, I never look at like, like uh, for example, like Jamar squats, like Jamar squat is probably, we'll see, but I think at this point it's it's maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe it might be better than mine though. I don't know. Who knows? Well, I think you, you, you beat his 90 kilo squat. Yeah. I, I, I'll, let's, let's, for the sake of argument, let's say our squat is basically virtually the same. Um, he 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 might be able to squeak out like seven. Um, I'm I'm expecting him to post like a seven forty triple. Um, that I don't look at that and then like be like I need to squeak out a seven forty triple. I just look at it. It's like I need to sharpen my training. Mm. Like I don't. I'm not gonna compete with him to hit that number. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it is a fine line. You're right. You need motivation. Your peers motivate you. Yeah. Uh, someone's right behind you. You got to put your foot on the gas. Someone's right in front of you. Same thing. Put your foot on yeah. the gas. It's just motivation to put your foot on the gas. It yeah. just is. There's that fine line of, am I, am I using it motivation to put my foot on the gas or am I going to gas out now? And it's right. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. You know, exactly. So like, I'm not going to. So I think the difference is like, I'm not going to empty the tank on my training to try and accomplish that number. Cause I like, him hitting 740 was probably in the cards for that particular block, right? I'm not going to now look at that and then, like, <laughs> look at my block and be like, man, fuck all this. I'm going to try to go for that 740. Right, you know? yeah. It's not in the cards at this particular time. So, um, yeah, I think that's where a lot of people kind of get it messed up. They look at, like, their competition, and they look at maybe a lift that maybe they're a little bit similar on. So they try to chase that person, but that person might be in a different sector of their training versus you, and then now you didn't fucked up everything. So, Dude, that's, like, that's the problem when you're almost a little too close. And yeah. that's when the heat in the kitchen starts making you think funny. Yeah. And you start looking when you shouldn't look or people yeah. start sending shit when they shouldn't send you shit. And you're like, <laughs> I don't want to see this shit. <laughs> like, what are you doing to me right now? Yeah. Who sent you? Right. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. Um, where do you rank the, cause the 90 kilos, it's always special to take a record or title, a, a weight class up. Mm. Where do you rank that in terms of accomplishment? How does that feel? Does that, because it's a weight class up, does it rank along the lines of one of your national titles, world titles, or how does it feel? Um, it only felt good because there was a lot of conversation about it. Um, I've been a big proponent of like local meets or local meets. Um, it is what it is. So I just thought it was cool just because a lot of people were talking shit and then it shut people up for a little bit. And that's about it. <laughs> I, I just look at it as like a precursor to like, okay, like I could be the best in this weight class too. So that's pretty much all that I took from it. Like I'm, it was a great experience. I was looking at more so like the experience. I got to go to Korea. I got to put up cool numbers. Um, and I got to show people that like, if I want to go into this weight class, I can become a problem. I can't say like, since it wasn't a national level me, I can't sit here and be like, Oh, like, you know, I'm the best, but I do have the, the highest total, but I understand the circumstance of which I did it. So like, I, I brought myself back to, uh, back to earth very quickly after that performance, just because it wasn't, it wasn't like a national stage meet. Um, I just know that I have the strength to compete with the best. So right. That's yeah. tough. Yeah, I mean, you finish, I mean, you still finish in the, the year number one in the 90 kilo, number one in 82.5. Yeah. I just use that as a as a talk, I use that as a point to talk shit, but at like the core of me understands like, okay, that's cool, but go do that like on a real stage. Like go do that on a national stage where there's like pressure and all that kind of stuff. So I have confidence I'll be able to do it, but I'm not gonna stand on that and just like completely just like own it like the way that i would had i won like on a national stage right, right? Yeah. yeah yeah that's still to come which which can lead the door for being more hungry and you're right like doing it there is awesome doing it head to head in a major showdown with brandon or whoever the heck's going to be because this will probably um i guess 2024 then or, or do you finish 2023 with another 90 kilo run or 
Well, like hard to tell at this yeah, point, maybe. right? Um, I might just do the same thing I just did this year. If there's enough time. Um, yeah, because after I do the after I do nationals, I want to start playing around with ninety. Um, and I I just know like once I start training as a ninety, it's gonna it's gonna be spooky because I literally only train as a ninety for a couple like like maybe like eight weeks if that. And I was I felt like I was PRing like every. <laughs> so um once i give that like a real training cycle of like a year or so like i feel like the number is going to be crazy and you want to do it like i mean you still wrestle or he man you can't get fluffy you know you're not going to do the no, no, the, gotta... the get better today is it going to be you drop the tanks you move into like big big hoodies <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, it's, no, hoodie. no. it's thick boy season yeah, but, no, it's, no, no. but it's the summer yeah gotta <laughs> look sexy doing it so it's i like when i did the so what's cool is that when i was doing the bodybuilding stuff I, my body was literally recomping as I was doing it. Like I was losing weight, but like I like the physique I was putting together was like I was like holy shit. I'm like I'm like 195, but veins are everywhere. I was like I've never looked like this. And one of the big reasons why I stay in the 82.5 is because I like the way my physique looks. Like it like around that weight. And I was like, wait a second, I'm I'm keeping this physique like. 10 pounds, 15 pounds up. Shit. Like, I'm, yeah, yeah. Like, what the hell? I'm like, I bet it might be time to move up then. Like, so is the bodybuilding you think help, I guess, to put on the muscle mass in all the appropriate ways so it doesn't just add? Because to an extent, squatting, well, I guess you could squat more and whatnot. But do you think is the bodybuilding going to be one of your weapons to move up the 90 appropriately where it's more muscle mass? Is add it where you need to? Or, yeah, I feel like bodybuilding has always been. Like my, my, yeah, I feel like bodybuilding and like the muscle that I have has always been a, a tool that I've used in my meets since I started. Like I have more muscle mass than other people. So mm -hmm. like my room for error is a little bit more because I could just muscle shit up if I fuck up. Um, a lot of powerlifters, when you look at their physique, you're like, you squat 660? Like how? You know what I'm saying? Or like, but it's because they're very technically efficient, right? So when they're in a competition and that technique deviates just a little bit, they may miss the lift. They may fuck up or, you know, but for me, like, I like to think I'm pretty technical. Like my lifts are very clean. Um, so if I fuck up just a little bit, like maybe I get like, you know, a little deviation here and there, I can still make up for it with the muscle mass that I have. Cause I can just muscle it up. Like, mm -hmm. it's almost like I have the ability to say, fuck it. Whereas some lifters can't do that, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. 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 I, think, I think the muscle is definitely a tool that I utilize all the time. And when I move up to the nineties, like I'm going to approach it as a bodybuilder with um with my with my nutrition so i put on as much muscle as i possibly can without just like just gaining weight to gain weight like you just right. gaining fat. like it's just i feel like that's it's not useless it's not useless weight but i want it to i want it to be muscle as much as possible you got a brand too people actually in my dms um when when like because right up it's a, it's a discussion obviously like is he gonna go 82 and a half once i said that you're coming on the podcast people are like Hit me up with questions with the same shit I was going to ask you anyways. But like one of them obviously was 82 and a half or 90 or whatever. Yeah. And then um, some of the discussion is like people like Russ can't be fluffy though. And I'm like, Russ is never going to be fluffy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I can't, uh, it ain't going to happen. Cause but, I walk around people. I walk around at 195. Like that's what I typically walk around at. That's 195 is like the heaviest I'll walk around at. I like to be like 192, 190. Um, but 195 is typical when I walk around at 90 is just 198. So that's three pounds up. So, you know, Dude, you, you were, you look jacked as shit in, in Korea. So I that, man, I don't know. Like I, if that's I feel, fat for you, I'm going to commit suicide. I just, <laughs> <laughs> bro, I just feel like sloppy. Like I was telling someone, I'm like, it's not that like my physique is trash. I just, I just know I could be tighter. Like I, right, I right. know like my personal standard. I'm like, I could be tighter and better than this for sure. Fair. Fair. Yeah. Uh, Arian, do you got um, questions or you want to get into the name game, sir? Nah, I'm good. We can go into the name game. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I want to okay. talk about, I know like there's like a comp that conversation about my comments about being um, the hardest worker in the room. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's do yeah, it. I never, I never got a chance to clear that up. So I remember I was watching y'all's podcast and like, um, I don't know his name. He was like a coach. But, there was, like, J is it Jason? Oh, they both have glasses. I'm going to say with the glasses. <laughs> They're oh, gosh. I don't know. It's okay. You go ahead. I'll be, I'll be yeah, able to so he, he made this. This is the only thing I want to clear up because every, everyone has different approaches or whatever. Um, he was like, you know, oh, like, you know, Russ, that's what Russ does. He likes to say controversial things in order to kind of get people talking about him. And, and, you know, that's just what he does. And I just I just think it's stupid. I think I, I listened to that 
and like to be honest that was like the one of the things that bothered me because like i do not say things to ruffle feathers or like to get people talking that's like the antithesis of who i am like i literally i literally so obviously i have my team around me you got joey you got weeds you got tina you got people like that i literally tell tell them to like i talk them off of ledges like to not not joey not joey but like I talk them off ledges not to post inflammatory things that draw unnecessary attention to us. Cause I'm like, I know what's, I know what people are going to say. Right. Anything that's ever popped off that I've done has been the, that's been y'all like that's y'all's conversation. I never did that thinking like, Oh, this is going to get them talking, <laughs> you know? So like when I made those comments, <laughs> when I made those comments about me being the hardest worker in the room and I feel like I, or yeah, I'm the hardest worker in the room. That was a mindset thing that I feel like every athlete should have. Like you need some type of, you need some type of athletic arrogance about you to be great at what you do. I don't, I don't think like whenever you have, whenever you guys are saying that there's, there's not some kid in their basement working harder than me. I don't give a fuck. Like there's, you're not like, okay. If, if that's what y'all feel, let me, let me fly out to that basement and we'll work out in the same room and I'm going to outwork him. Like if there is someone that out, that outworks me, I'm going to go find that person and outwork him. Like that's, that's just how you should think as an athlete. Like I would never sit here and say that there's someone that works harder than me. That's embarrassing. Like as an athlete, how can you say that? You know what I mean? So when they were saying like, oh, like how can you say that definitively? I can say that definitively because I'm confident in my ability to work hard. And if I see someone working harder than me, then I'll up my game to work to outwork that person. That's just an athlete's mindset. And that's like basic one-on-one athlete shit. Like I, 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 it bothered me that, I was like embarrassed that the conversation had turned into that. I was like, what are we talking? It's like, well, how can he know that he's actually the hardest worker? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I remember listening to that. I'm like, I'm like, man, if this was like the NBA or the NFL or the UFC, that would be like the most embarrassing thing. Like, could you, bro, could you imagine watching a UFC fight night? And uh, one of the coaches is like, how can he say that he's the hardest worker? I mean, how can he actually like antiquate that? I mean, does he know? <laughs> that's, that's, does he know, you know like, there's probably a fighter in Iowa yeah. that's training in his basement that will never make nationals, and yeah. you know, he probably works harder than X Y. I'm like, man, get the fuck. Like, what are we talking? Your impression about? is bang on. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, because like I just didn't like how he cared uh, how that individual characterized like what I was talking about and try to brush it off. I'm like. And then I think that same person said he 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 works with athletes. I'm like, so then you should know the athlete mindset. Like, it's know. just his. They're so like data driven. Um, they're like data driven nerds, right? I say that affectionately. Yeah. There's a lot of data driven nerds in powerlifting. Um, so you know that's exactly what you said broke it down. You know how could you definitively say that if I actually took a hundred athletes and I this is how guys like that they crunch data and they're whatever. They're like behind the scenes, those data dudes. Yeah. Whereas um, uh, your you have the mindset of, like you just said, that quote, I remember there was an athlete talking about, let me tell you two things. If we are side by side on, an, on a treadmill, here's one thing I know. You're going to get off your treadmill before I get off mine. And that's it. And that's it. That's and, and, and that's, and that's just the mentality where like, um, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, man. Like it, this, I don't yeah. even know what, what sport like, that athlete was in that said that, but I, I, it's the same type of quote. It's the same it vein quite, of quote. Yeah. It's like, what, like, what are we really talking about here? Like there is this conversation. Okay. So perfect. There, this is Kobe story. I love Kobe. Kobe's like my favorite athlete of all time. Kobe, uh, there is this player. Uh, his name is Jay Williams. He I think he was like working out and he was going to go work out. And Kobe was like already there shooting shots, drenched in sweat. Jay did his workout. And he was still trying to work out. And then um, he finished up. And then uh, he went over to Kobe. I'm butchering the story. But he went over to Kobe. He's like, yo, like, why are you still here? He's like, I just wanted to show you that I'll work it. So I stayed as long. I stayed. I wanted to make sure I stayed longer than you did. Yeah. That's just the mindset that comes. Like, that's the mindset that I'm talking about. Like, whether it's quote unquote true or not, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm just saying that. Actually, I think it's true anyways. But (laughs) I (laughs) I think it's true anyways. I've never been in a gym. And looked at someone and be like, damn, that motherfucker is outworking me. I've yeah. never in my life done that. And I've been in powerlifting for quite some time. I've never seen it. And even if I do see it, then I'll just up my game up. That's what it is. Um, but yeah, it's just, 
Yeah, someone, whenever, um, I think it was Laya or Leia. I, I can't pronounce her name properly. Is it Laya? Leah. Leah. Oh my God. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, she was like, well, how could you know that there's probably some kid in bumfuck Egypt like working harder than you? I'm like, no, they're not. I'm sorry. Like, I don't care. I don't care or- if they're in their basement doing X, Y, and Z. Like, I'll go, I'll literally fly them out to Corrupted and show them like, no, nah, this is how I work out and it's harder than you. So that's just, that's just how I think. Like, I don't, it's not even, it's embarrassing that we're having this conversation in my opinion, but. It's good of all people Taylor was on that podcast though. And yeah, you know, he, lo- he loves that yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, so he was, he was like bouncing it out big time where it's like, nah, nah, that's, that's exactly the way you look at it. Yeah, and I want people, it was, I, I had like this clip on my YouTube video or yeah, my YouTube video. I was asking people and I asked like this, this former athlete, his name is Dylan. He, he, he competed at the corrupted strength. He's, I think he has a bright future ahead of him. I said, Dylan, come over here for a second. Didn't, didn't prompt him or anything. I was like, do you think I work harder than you? And he looked at me and he said, he looked at me and said, hell no. <laughs> and really? I was like, yes. And I'm like, I'm like, my man, dap him up. Cause that's and how then I, you said, now get the fuck out of my gym. But yeah, 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 you got the right I, attitude. I was like, I was like, hey, 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 hey. I, I, I work hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Your membership's canceled. Like, yeah, but that's like, <laughs> but, but good on you. But good on you. I like no, you. but that's that's the mentality that I love. Like all my boys, like all my boys in my personal group chat, bro, they are dogs. They work hard. Like if I'm not pushing myself, I'm thinking like, what would my boy Josh or what would my boy Alex be doing in a situation? Like, yo, I know they're gonna be giving like the the most effort they could possibly give because they feel like they're the hardest worker in the room. So I don't want to be next to someone or working next to someone that thinks that other people work harder than like what the fuck is that? Like what? Like, ew. Like, that, that's just contagious. Like, you lazy, man. Like, that's how I think about that kind of stuff. So, I, I could, it could just never come out of my mouth that someone works harder than me. Yeah, yeah that, that person puts in more work than me. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> what, what we, hey, like, just, just think about watching your next fight night and then in the, in the, um, in the press conference. Yeah, I, I think so and so works harder than me for sure. For sure. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I didn't work about? that hard for this one. I hope it goes well. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it goes well. Yeah. Was, like, what are we really talking about, man? It's um. Uh. Yeah. I mean, I, I I totally get it, and I think it might even be some people just don't like to verbalize certain things. I you know because they come from like a different like. Leah's from France, and I think it's probably culturally different over there. The way like their bravado is, I think. I don't know. Because I know there are some people in, um, I don't know. I've heard some cocky French people. (laughs) It depends. I don't know. I mean, I don't, because I I think it's a powerful thing. That's the state. It might be that. The stereotype is like in North America, um, you know, like in the West, it's far more brash, right? Is what they say. But then, you know, there are like Europeans and shit though that are pretty cocky and confident pretty too. Cocky. You got Luca going crazy in the NBA, and he's from Slovenia or something. I, I can't remember exactly where he's from, but that motherfucker talks shit. My brother was telling me he was that um some some soccer player moved to LA, and fucking LeBron James wanted him to let him know that he was he's the king of la or right so he like sent his fucking jersey and this guy this soccer player from europe um, takes out full page ads in the la times you know the king is here and all this shit like like i've arrived whatever so lebron is like i'm gonna send him my fucking jersey just to let him know who's the king and this cocky son of a bitch signed the jersey and sent it back to him (laughs) (laughs) there you go fanboy and he was like they were like, oh Love shit. So it. to your point, yeah, there is um yeah, that's an amazing story. But there is like there's some cocky people around. Maybe it is, I don't know. Maybe it is powerlifting. I do think you you know, we had discussion before where I think powerlifting, because we aren't the big sports yet, it's growing. It's not like fucking some like Olympic sports that aren't one of the major sports, like like I had I've said this before, javelin or the hurdles don't mm. have a community like powerlifting. There isn't massive stars and hurdles and podcasts on, you know, running the hurdles or javelin throw or high jump. They don't have it. And they're in the Olympics. We're not soccer, whatever the shit for obviously basketball, whatever, but we're not those other sports either. We have a weird community. That's like strong with like strong with it. Mm. So, and you had mentioned it. We sometimes revert back to that mentality of the small sport. 
Yeah. But if we're going to start making some bigger strides, people still, if they don't embrace these personalities in this talk, at least just understand, you know, let them do it because mm. the mainstream appreciate this, you know, like I love this kind of stuff. Like I think it would be bland if everyone's like take into account everybody's feelings when you say that, because that's going to hurt someone else's feelings. Yeah, it's like I mean, nothing you said. And I'm talking, this is a discussion with Leah. And I say this all about Leah. I fucking love Leah, right? She's a sweetheart. If she hears this, she knows how I think about her. But um, me and her were talking about it. And she was like, think about some kid who might hear this and they're working real hard and how that might impact them. And I'm like, maybe, maybe not. It doesn't have to be negative. It could be like some people see Russ and be like, I want to be like that. Yeah. You know, I want to like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not... It's just not the way of, it depends on how you view it. I'm like, some people strive, they see that and they're like, I want to be like that. I want to walk on my chest out and like, yeah. it gives me strength. If yeah. you could do it, I could do it. You know, there's different ways of, of looking at it. I mean, look at all the kids that look up to these professional athletes. I mean, right. they're they're walking around with their chest out. I mean, I was a huge Kobe fan. Like, I mean, yeah. that was, it's like the epitome of just like, no nonsense, hard work, you know, um, I, I, push against that that mindset you know you want to keep it clean to where like kids could uh, um kids could follow you right but i mean you still got to pop your shit you still got to talk and boast yourself um and not like completely out of just like um what is it being um cocky but just having that confidence and that air about you where you're a supreme athlete and you're going to I mean, you're not going to back down from saying you're a supreme athlete do you is this starting to get to a point now where like because it, I don't know what the fuck. It's just like the last six months have really been popping off. It's people have always listened, but it like, you know, same with like you and Taylor both all of a sudden. Taylor's like, fuck, man, it gets hot every time. I, I asked him to come on the holidays Christmas special. He was just on and he's like, Doug, like fucking it seems to get hot every time I come on the podcast, though. And I'm like, it's it's a holiday special. I don't think anything's yeah. bad's gonna happen. But like, do you think there's a reason it, I what now that it's happening to you? Mm -hmm. Is it going to start being like, fuck, this is how I feel. I want to say this, but this is going to happen. Or are you just like, fuck it. Or sometimes you'd be like, I don't know if I got the energy for this right now. Yeah. So I used to, I actually just made this uh, decision recently. Um, that's why that comment that that coach made really bothered me that he said that like, I go out of my way to say inflammatory, inflammatory things for traction. Um, I actually, like, I don't, like I think about, okay, like I don't feel like having a bunch of people talk about me or, or dissect every single word that I'm saying because it's gonna be taken out of context. So I, there's sometimes I wanna talk about someone or not even talk about someone, but just like make a comment about um, a lifter, just maybe something they said or whatever. I just don't do it because I know that like, there's like almost 500,000 people's eyes on me because I know it's gonna be taken out of context. So I just don't even bother because I don't feel like dealing with that energy. And then, it just started happening regardless. Like even when I like when I tiptoe, still. And I'm like, you know right. what? I'm just gonna say what the fuck I want to say because they're gonna talk about it anyways. So I'm just gonna be myself. Cause like the the past year, the past like two or three years, I've been very tiptoey. I don't say much. Like if you really look at what I say, I don't think I've ever directly mentioned someone that didn't start it. Everything I do is a response. Cause I, I I'm actually against like talking about people because I know it's going to be taken the wrong way. Like what Petrie did, I thought I, I didn't like, cause I'm like, I wouldn't do that. Like, why, like, why would you go out of the way to say like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I shouldn't be someone's number one lifter. Right. And then what other people do as well. So I'm like, you know what? People aren't going to give me that same courtesy. Fuck it. You know, fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> like, this is, see, I've noticed it, it seems it is a little new. Like previously you wouldn't have. And now was there something that's like different now? Or has it just been, a wearing down over time, not really a definitive thing. It's that, yeah, wearing down for sure. It's just yeah. like constant. It's like constant. Every time I say something, um, it's like a pro, not not like a problem, but it just causes a shitstorm. Um, and that's me being like chill. Like I'm, you know, me, me me making my comments about the dot stuff turned into this whole thing, and I was like, that wasn't my intention. I was just saying. <laughs> You know, a lot of people were mentioning me and saying that I should do a meet based off of dots. And I was like, I personally have never cared about dots and I only care about winning. And that turned the whole thing. And people were like attacking me, like, ta like attacking me personally, not even attacking like the take. And I'm like, really? like you son of a bitch. It's like, what? it's like, it's like saying like, oh, I'm stupid or just like, you know, it's like, I just, I'm not big on talking like that. 
Right. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm just like, you know what, man, I have not said anything about people because I'm like trying to protect, not them, but like just protect that, that relationship or whatever. But I'm just like, you know, if they're not going to, if people aren't going to afford me that same luxury, just fuck it. Just say what I want to say. And then keep it pushing. I don't look at comments anyway. So who cares? Is it, is it to a point also where like, is there stuff that you're like, look at if you, if you're addressing, like for instance, Petrie was addressing in terms of a sporting thing. You're like, I'll respond to that. Cause that's, that's a sporting thing. Okay. But if someone's getting low and you think they're doing it to get attention because Russ has half a million, you're like, I'm not going to make you famous. I know what you're trying to do. Yeah, you're yeah, trying yeah. to instigate me to make you famous. I'm not going to make you famous. Petrie. I'm actually going to face on a platform. I respect what he's doing on a platform. This is sporting. Yeah, let's fucking go. Let's debate some sports, fella. That's why we're here. But yeah. if if you're gonna get if you're gonna get ugly and think that I'm gonna make you famous or whatever the shit, opposite. Yeah, there's people that have done that for sure. I think we all know who too. But I just, I but there could be. There's probably several though over the years. That's like for sure, for sure. You know, it's just, just on policy. No, yeah, there's no way that I would like publicly give them that platform because I just know how that goes. Like you, once you address like a once you address that, it just becomes even bigger now because I just have, I have a microphone and they have like a little, um, I don't even know. Like let's say I have like a loudspeaker or some shit and they have like a, they're yelling in the wind. Yeah. The wind. <laughs> I ain't trying to put them on that loudspeaker. Yeah, exactly. I think about stuff like that. Like often be like, like everyone knows those quotes about like, don't respond in anger and like, um, and understand what some people are doing. And this is going to happen. Like the bigger and bigger you get. And yeah. there'll be people who just try to like, kick something up you said one time um don't tag me if you're ranked 14th tag me if you're in, <laughs> you know, you're like you're like tag me if you're in the top five top three and i gotta look at you but you're like don't come don't you know this come on it's another thing, your profile yeah another thing that people gotta stop doing is like man don't don't say that don't say stuff that you wouldn't say to my face right yeah, like yeah. yeah like i i've i've just i've been in a room with these people and like they they talk crazy and I'm like, bro, you would never ever in your life say that to my face. So like I always based off like when I talk to people on the internet or whatever, I would never like jump out the window and say something I would never like address that person like face to face. Yeah. Right. So some people just get like this like like the big chest on the internet. I'm just like slow down. Like I, I literally saw you at TSS. And you're like, you're a pussy. Like, don't <laughs> you, you are nice. You were, you were, some people have yeah. a soft voice and everything. S some people do curate a certain personality online though. Like this is several people, a lot of people over the past, like couple of years, right. We've seen it. Yeah. Um, so it, it, that's where I think in the long term it's better to just be yourself. If you're not that guy, don't be that guy just on social media. Cause eventually like you burn bridges um, people see you and you're not the same. If you're like, well, fuck, I'm going to heat change his tone real quick. And like all that, and like, it's just, you're not that guy. Then don't try to be that guy. But some people like, they were never that guy their whole life. And all of a sudden like, no, I'm going to be that guy. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> I got an opportunity. You're talking crazy. I'm like, I know you got social anxiety in real life. So slow down, buddy. Yeah. We're having a conversation. So don't be talking all that shit. Because when I see a person, it's going to be like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not saying like I'm gonna beat nobody up or whatever, but I'm like, bro, you're not. Come on, you're not like that. Stop. It's, stop. It, yeah, it makes it awkward. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, okay, we good for the for the name game. This has been a good discussion, man. <laughs> yeah. we're, 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 we got like we're cl we're crushing some minutes here. We're now we're forty minutes already. Um, all right, kind sir, let's rock and roll here. Do you want to do the name game here, Arian? Nah, you lead the way, man. Okay, well, I just feel bad because I've been doing so much talking. That's uh, fine. I'm listening. I'm making the timestamps over here. The that's clips right. I'm going to make. <laughs> that's right. He's, you, yeah, Russ is belting off some good time timestamps. And um, and you're always good on pulling up facts for us, too, if we need some numbers, too, which I appreciate, sir. Okay. First name. So anyone listening, name game. I say name. You tell me a few words. If you want to go on, like more than a few words, that's fine. But usually a few words, knee-jerk reaction. Sean Noriega. Um, okay, so I'm gonna preface all of this by saying, like, I'm just speaking honest. I'm not gonna bash the person. I'm not gonna like go in. I'm just speaking from a competitive aspect, right? Um, them as a lifter. Um, you said Sean Noriega, uh, underperformer and then uh, overthinker. Um, I think that his training numbers never reflect what he does on the platform. 
Um, I think I'm not sure where the disconnect is, but uh, whenever I was competing against him, it just I just knew that something was going to happen on me day, like something, like just something. So um, that's what I think about when his name comes up. Jamar Royster. I would say um, we talked about it. I feel like he was too nice. Um, he has he has this new found approach uh, called fuck being humble, which I love now because I feel like he was too nice, too quiet uh, about like kind of the stuff he was dealing with. And I like to see the new approach that he has now. So, yeah. Jamal Browner. Potential. 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 I think uh, we've talked about this too. He could, he could, he could be bigger than what he is now. So like on social media and just like all platforms, I mean, he's strong as shit. Mm. I just think he could, um, if he spent more time like showing people like his personality and doing all that kind of stuff on all fronts, I think, which, which he's slowly doing. Um, I think he could be way, way bigger than he is now, but I would, I would say potential. I think you're one ever said right. His lifts get tons of attention, but you don't see a lot of personality every now and then he did one. He did. A, I see a couple skit videos he did that yeah, were he, funny. He's got it. He can yeah, just doesn't do a lot of it. Keep going. Got to do more. That's right. Um, Joey flex. Nope. My man's the guy. That's that was, it. that was easy. I had uh, a long ass, I had a long ass post about him on my IG story. I just feel like he's, he's the best. I feel like when it's all said and done, he will be the best coach in you the usapl history just given like the totality of his like resume um champions in different weight classes champions with different personalities um yeah there's I mean, come on there's not <laughs> i gave him coach of the year and you help you help greatly at the end to help swing that because he, he collected another weight class right so it helps he's just, he's just um there's like something about him he's a great communicator He's a great motivator. Um, his ability to work with different personalities is incredible. Like, yeah, he just, he's, he's the best in my opinion. So I've liked seeing him over the years too, like mature into this wily veteran that he is now. And, and like when I met him, he was like mid twenties and now he's, how old is he in his thirties now? Finally, like a little bit over 30. I mean, yeah. and, and it's, it's wild, man. Like he, you know, like the way you describe him, he is that guy now that's that mature Wiley veteran now that you go to and he would, yeah, uh, it's, it's been cool seeing people and you, you see him progress, but uh, anyways, okay. Wheeze. Um, there's so many words. Uh, Sexy. What's the word? Um, no, what's the word? Uh, Handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, um, oh, what's the word, man? It's like, it's not, it's like a, oh, rough around the edges. Oh, okay. is he really? Edges. Yeah, he's, he's still learning, man. He's so young. Um, He's only 21, man. So like, there's a lot of things that he needs to go through right now in order to kind of get to where he's going to be as a man. Um, We've talked about it many times. He just has a lot of growing to do and he's mm -hmm. on the right track. It's just, just a lot of growing to do, man. A lot of learning, a lot of growing. And, and once he does that, he's going to become someone special in my opinion. So it's just like a process. Like it's, it's, I'm literally watching the process. He's, you know, here, but I'd say rough around the edges because he's still, there's still so much for him to learn, you know? So. Well, I mean, moving, moving out, doing everything is getting out of his comfort zone. That's After all remember, he's 21, literally right. fucking 21. So like I said, rough around the edges and he just needs to keep growing and learning. Um. All right. Taylor Atwood. I feel like he's he's putting together a resume if he continues that will put him in like one of the greatest of all time conversations. Um, so I would say I'll say dog dog. He's someone that is very rare for me to look at a lifter and be like, I need to kind of like up my game to kind of like uh, continue to be in that same conversation, even get in that conversation. So I would say Taylor's like one of those lift, like one of the rare lifters, if not one of the only lifters that makes me feel as though like I need to be uh, I just need to keep pushing myself to kind of reach that level that he's reached. Um, John Hack. I think about what could have been. Mm, yeah. It's a natural, no shit. 
Yeah, and I I I say that from this perspective of like I would have loved to compete against him. I just I just wonder where he would have been had he stayed natural because he's one of the people that I really wanted to beat, um, or at least compete against. Like I like I'm telling you, like when I was when I was coming up and I was like trying to get to that national stage, he he was like a mark. Like I I started powerlifting and when I started powerlifting, I asked, I was like, yo, who's who's that guy right now? Who's who's number one? It said John Hack. I'm like, really? Like, what's what's a John Hack? What, like, who is that? Looked him up. I'm like, this guy's from Wisconsin. Like, <laughs> so I just wish that we had the opportunity to compete against each other. Um, but I always think about like what could have been when I think about John. Fair enough. Uh, Brandon Petrie. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Ask you. Ask you in 2024. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I I generally don't think anything. I just nothing i just feel like uh yeah he's i mean nothing i feel like <laughs> i feel like i'm like i'm gonna take what he got so i mean like i just don't, don't think anything you know so but essentially he should enjoy it while he has it before you take yes. it. yes yes get your shit talking out of the way now <laughs> say what you gotta say now enjoy the little moment that you have now so um all right delaney wallace nice he's he's it's too nice. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever freaking met. He is like, I even met his fucking parents at IPF Worlds, and right. surprise, surprise, crazy nice. Yeah. <laughs> like they, like they're crazy nice. I want to, I want to see him. Um, I want to see him be more of a dog. He's a great guy. I think, uh, I think like you have to have that edge to you. Just a, just a little bit of edge to you. Um, yeah, he's he's dope. Um, Bob Matthews. Uh, potential, like potential. Um, I feel like I feel like he could be one of the new faces of powerlifting if he if he plays his cards right. I want to see him. I want to see him do more. Like I want to see him do more on the social media aspect of things. I don't. I think he should. I just think I think he should do more. Like I don't. I think powerlifters that have the opportunity to become like faces of powerlifting should do more when it comes to social media, like not just your lifts, like show them the personality, show them like what kind of goes into the process of you becoming who you are. Um, I just want him to see him be, uh, see him be more consistent with that. Cause I think that he has something special. He's a, he's a very funny, interesting guy. I just want him to, sh I want him to show that more often. Um, but he's, I mean, strong as shit. I just want to see him keep stacking the chips, winning, all that kind of stuff. He, He's in a situation, he's lucky to have Ashton and Keenan in the same weight class. So he's got showdowns that'll people be excited yeah, about, sure. which is good. And also, um, he's from like, I'll make this up, like Brooklyn, same yeah. neighborhood is if I don't know if you've seen the documentary on Takashi 69, those dudes he was hanging out with, like Takashi linked up with those bloods. Yeah. He's like, those guys are like a neighborhood over, man. He's yeah, like, yeah. like, he's like telling me about where he's grew up the whole lot. I'm like, dude, this is fascinating. Like we could totally veer off on the podcast and start talking but like, yeah, there's a lot more to him, to your point that he hasn't necessarily put out. And, um, but he's, he, he is here and there. We'll see what happens when that showdown happens. If he gets, yeah. he, he has an opportunity to become really special because like you said, he has that showdown and if he comes out on top of that consistently and then separates himself from the bunch. Yeah. That's where you start becoming special and becoming different. And then, like I said, you should capitalize with that with your social medias because I mean, you could, I don't know if he has like a job outside of social media and all that kind of stuff, but literally like you could quit your job if you do it right. Like you just have to do it right. Leading into a very special showdown like that is everyone's watching capitalize now. Yeah. Right after you win capitalize then. And if you yeah. need a social media guy for the lead up to that's the time to do it. It might not come around again. Right. <laughs> just also find a weight class. <laughs> right. Yeah. Find a weight class. Like, I know, I know he's uh, probably like the leader in dots or whatever, but that that doesn't that's not long. That's not like something. Not that it's not something to hang your hat on, but like find a weight class, stick to it, commit to it, and become great in that weight class, so you could latch on to something and be like, no, 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 like I'm the goat one ten. Like there's no one that's doing it like me. There's no one that's done it like me. So that dot stuff, like. Like I said, it's a, it's a way to augment your your legacy, but you need to find a weight class to stay in and just dominate. I feel like it's really tough. 
I don't know. I don't know. That's a conversation, but I don't, it's kind of tough when you go from like weight class to weight class, to weight class, to weight class. It's just kind of like, it's kind of hard to like put your thumb on something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that, that I've seen in other, like other weight class sports, like USC has a Conor McGregor one, two, but he never defended either title. Whereas other guys like George St. Pierre, John Jones, Anderson Silva defended like 10 times in a row and yeah. dominant. And people like, when you think welterweight, you think George St. Pierre and that's it. Yeah. Doors close or whatever. Right. Yeah, to your point. Miss them days, man. And but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it still was like my favorite fighter of all time, man. Those oh, fights. no. Oh. Don't get me going. Arian's like, the please, Russ, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to derail everything. Arian's right. like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be another hour. Um, Okay. Three more, sir. I added one. Uh, Leah Bavois. Um, she good. Yeah, she great. <laughs> she great. Yeah. We have Jessica Bittner. That's another one. Uh potential. I don't know what she does for a living or like what she does, but she could she could be like a social media rock star, I feel like. Um she literally has like the looks and the and the strength. I'm not not sure. Uh, I wish sometimes I was making this joke. I wish sometimes I would just veer off and be like a social media manager. Like a like a like a like a um almost like an agent because like I could literally make these people like three to four extra racks a month like easy because I'm like bro like you you guys have everything you need Jessica's like one of those people it's like bro you're jacked you're strong as shit you could run that up like you could run that up on TikTok you could run that up on be easy 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 so for her potential for sure also consistency I feel like but, uh, but she's been around for a hot minute. You you That's would remember her in Calgary World. She was the junior world champion. She probably, if you bumped into her then, like she's been at all the worlds you've been into as well. Like she's, yeah. She's oh, actually 2016 was the first time I seen her at a world. So to your point, she's always been for like a long time, just like at the world stage. It's a hard, man. It's really, really difficult. She's a... Um, uh... I was going to mention she's a, a pharmacist, so she like does powerlifting on the side. But she seems to be getting more involved in like sponsorships and going to events. I just look; she has two hundred seventy-two thousand followers on Instagram, so she's she's building it up. She, she could just more, have more than me for sure, because she, I mean she's a girl, and like on top of that, like she's strong, she looks phenomenal. Like that's easy. Like she doesn't; she's nowhere near as active as like like yourself or like as a. Yeah. like thought out in terms of like, how do I want to approach social media as yourself? Like, oh, like you have a media team, like you're, you're probably too, too many levels up to compare, but maybe like, but even like, I, I don't even get, I like people always, people will say like, Oh, you got a media team. So it's easy for you. I'm like, no, nah, uh, like, no, I don't. I, yeah, I got a media team, but that's for like my YouTube. And I, like, if I had to, I could do it myself. If I had to, I would do yeah. it myself. I mean, I don't have so to. So it's doable. It's doable yeah, for it's some doable, of these people. Man. You can definitely do it. I remember, bro, I used to edit a full YouTube video every single day. Like every day. I would stay up until like three in the morning, four in the morning. It's, you just got to commit to it. I wonder if like there's a space for this. Like you're too busy now, but it's like down the road. If there was a space for you helping people out and, and doing just like some kind of, I, who knows? The landscape, the landscape could be changed by then, but not the skills though. Yeah. I mean, YouTube's been around since 2006 or eight. So I bet you not everything will change in like 10, yeah, 15 right now, it's Right now it's TikTok. Like TikTok is like easy pickings because it's like a whole new, I mean, we've talk, I've talked about it many times on here, but it's like a whole new base. Like if you're a power lifter right now, I don't know why you're not posting on TikTok or if you don't have a TikTok, you should definitely be posting on there because it's a whole, it's like a whole new world. It's like, imagine we're on planet earth right now. Powerlifting is just on planet earth. They're literally just figuring out what, what powerlifting is on Mars, which is TikTok. Like they're literally yeah. just figuring out. Someone said, why do you have chalk on your thighs? Oh, and I was like, <laughs> I made a video explaining, hey, this is baby powder. This is why I put baby powder on my legs and it went viral. Like, I explained to people why I put on a belt. Damn. I explained to people how I put on knee sleeves. It went viral. Like, it's a whole different, there's a whole different base of people that don't even know what they don't know on TikTok right now. So. Yeah. You just got to be patient and and, and approach it and know your audience essentially and don't go over their head. Um, last one, J1, the nine, the Avenger dude from untested who came over for one meet. Yeah. Not sure what's going on with him, but I think he's going to go USAP. Let's say he is going USAPL 82 and a half. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, try not to be like. Um, what what's what's something that isn't? Uh, man, uh, I would say just. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good word to like not be mean. Talking, I'll just say talks too much. Talks too much. He ain't, he ain't there yet, so talks way I, too much. I do wonder if he ends up going. Have you heard if he's going eighty two and a half USAPL? I thought that was he did one, and then uh, but then I thought he was talking about maybe he makes comments know. on my post talking about like oh, I, you know I'm looking forward to competing against you or beating you or whatever. Him and his coach. I'm just like okay. Like <laughs> this yeah. is not like USPA where you get 24 hour wins and you get to use a dev bar. So you've heard it all before is the problem, right? Yeah. For you. So I just want people to remember what happened before I go off. Like, <laughs> everything I do, everything is a everything I do is a response. So if you hear I know you don't go to nationals, but Aaron, if you hear me in the back room screaming and talking shit, you know where it came from. I never start anything. Bro could have came over to the to this federation and just been like, hey, like I want to compete against you. Cool. But he's he's been saying some like stuff. Where I'm just like, I don't get it. But and not he's even beating- putting together, not even putting together a total that like I'm like, I don't even think I could total that. Like, <laughs> like I'm like, I would I can't even I would get that total. I, I don't even think it like I would I would out total that on my openers. I'm like, how did you, you know what I mean? Like, how did how did that happen? Like so, <laughs> so essentially, yeah. So essentially, uh, he's beating the drums for a showdown that you don't think is is valid yet. He isn't. I don't think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, maybe we'll see. Who knows? Um, all right, I'm out of my names. Arian, you all good there, Playboy? Yeah, man. Sounds good. Listen, Russ, much appreciated, dude. We did. Two, we just crushed two hours. You fucking. You you spent a day on the plane. Um, you did two hours on the podcast crush some lifts and got your hair done. That's a very productive day, young man. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you coming on. You had messages said, dude, let's, let's rock and roll. Let's do this. Uh, you don't seem tired or jet lagged or anything though. Uh, Cause I think it's like, it's probably, I don't know, man. It's, I forgot what time. Let me check what time it is in Tokyo right now. Cause that's probably why. Timing wow. is everything. I'm glad I got you when I did. You said you feel, you feeling up to it. We better crush it now because I mean, who knows when that jet lag and everything kicks you. Yeah, I definitely just wanted to jump on because I'm the type of person. It's like, hey, I'm gonna let this all go. I'm gonna say what I gotta say, and then now we're gonna get back to work. Um, right. I'm not gonna talk too much or mention other people, but I'm definitely at a point now where it's just like, hey, man, if you, I'm not gonna hold my tongue about shit no more, and I'm not gonna hold, I'm not gonna hold my people to pop off when they want to pop off. Like, I don't, I can, I can't tell you how many times I've talked weeds off a ledge. I'm like, hey, man, hey, hey delete that, delete that. <laughs> 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 hey, yeah. hey, hey, delete that, bro. I'm not doing right. that shit. So, right? Is any because- people, man? People really like. People really don't have a problem like like shitting on me like publicly. I get like in group chats and shit, but people really go out on a ledge on their like stories and really talk shit. And I'm like, I don't even know who this person is. Like, I'm not even sure where this is coming from. Like, you know what I mean? So it's wild. It's fucking. Um, e- even in powerlifting, the amount of celebrity you've achieved is it's still it's big and. uh, this is what comes with it. You're like, what the fuck? You don't even know me. You hate me. On the flip side, though, people who don't know you who love you. So this is what I've heard people on other podcasts, like like, you know, Joe Rogan or whatever, say like celebrities talk about. It becomes weird when you've never met someone in your life and they fucking hate your guts. Yeah. But then on the flip side, you tell yourself, I'll accept that because I'll also accept someone who's never met me in their life says yeah. they love me. Yeah. And you're like, all right. I just got to sit in the middle. Maybe none of stay balanced and tell myself none of them are real. I chop yeah. off the outliers. I don't let the, you, you're awesome. You're amazing. Go to my head. Cause you don't really know me. And I also don't let the, you're an asshole. Go to my head. Cause you don't really know me. The people who know, you know, you, whatever the shit. And uh, it is what it is, yeah. but it's fucking, you're feeling it now, man. You, you <laughs> the LeBron, the LeBron speech when he lost in the uh, 2010 finals, you don't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. <laughs> I'll look it up. I'm going to look it up right after this. He basically says a lot of that then? He basically says like, just look it up. Look at, look at LeBron post-game speech after losing finals. He basically just says like, you know, 
It's like I live, I live a wonderful life, you know, and uh, anyone talking shit, you still have to go back to your nine to five, you know, and I, I live the life doing what I love and, and you you guys have to be miserable doing what y'all do. And I went trade place with any of y'all. So <laughs> well, it is. Well, that's true. if this is the worst it is, this is all I got to deal with. I'll deal with it. Yeah, I'll deal with it, man. It's all good. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Listen, man, much appreciated. Thanks you for coming on as per usual, dude. I appreciate you. Arian, I appreciate you too, dude. Um, everybody listening, please do subscribe. Give us high ratings and until next time, six pack lap it at and we are out.